I should have matched in she. Time for a bit of TCG stuff, world quest stuff, simple enough. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so first, a few quick dailies, and of course, picked up Battle Bass. Wait, wait, hello. Did I notate it incorrectly or something? I didn't know, okay. I was worried for a second. Okay, we're chilling. Okay, fair enough. Hmm. So I'm wondering, now that we can select literally anything, I mean, the answer is probably just not on stuff. And it's... I could just get a bunch of books for Kinich, maybe? Oh, okay. Very Italian. Just get a bunch of books for Kinich or something. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since he's coming up... A lot of that. So the question is, what do I pick up now? <sighs> Which weapon do I try to refine? Sack Jade is honestly Nuvia will always be good. Just get another Sack Jade refine. Okay. Cool. That's a lot of artifact juices. Sacrificial Jade. Good amount of stuff. This is so nice to get. Okay. That's of a journey. So that means we can take this from three to four. That is nice. Make him even stronger, just by a little bit. Okay. So 56 and 70. Milani can kind of use this one, but she overcaps on crit really, really easily with it. So it's really best not to. Okay. Well, also apparently, I know the location of another Night Soul local legend. I think I'll find it right after I get these dailies done. Yeah, yeah. It's exciting. I should also presumably be trying to get more stuff for... Artifact juices or something, maybe. Because I do need a good keen each set of Obsidian Codex to... Not to say. But... Do you want to know which one it is? Which one I found? I could tell you. Okay. Seconds. Just go over here, get this done real quick. And, of course... Emily isn't too far away, but not too close either. Mm. Okay. Come on, get over here. Just... And over there. It's the Capybara. I'm not sure how surprised that will make you. Thank you, and... Come on. And then me... Hit by... Grab one, two... Four, bite, and get that going. Bite. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. Whatever. And so just got you left. Hello. One, two. Money. Bite. Good damage. And bite again. Thank you. Nice. Okay. Mm. So I just got a couple more of these to do and wait just a second. Hi Kozu, how are you doing? How'd you been mush, Genshi? I'm gonna be fighting a big copy bearer in a second, so sit tight for that. How are you? <sighs> Gotta do a little obstacle course first. Well it The Copy Bearer fights willingly to test us. The Knights of Warriors are all deliberately there as challenges to prove- to basically look for a worthy warrior to fight the Abyss. That's what their voice lines all say. They challenge you and 
when you defeat them, they praise your strength. The entire point is to strengthen you to fight the Abyss. Okay, do you have good news? Or are you just gonna yell at me more? Oh, and is it... Halloween isn't until next month. Okay, but what is it, actually? And... Oh, okay. I didn't know you knew my friend's birthday. My Canadian friend's birthday is tomorrow, actually. I'll tell them that you're celebrating, too. Okay. Just a couple travel warriors. You know, honestly, I respect you for that. Oh. Never mind. I, w I will say... Thank you, thank you. I'll make sure to pass the message along. We'll be... I... I, I, I understand. I can actually acknowledge that and understand that. Okay. There we go. Let's just set you all on fire. There we are. One, two, get all of you. Happy birthday to, to Canada? Wait. I feel like I'm missing something here. Okay, so we got one more daily before we fight the Capybara. Okay, and that one is going to be something with a guy from Inazuma. You were accosted by someone at the Stadium of the Sacred Flame. Tablet of Tona. Can we teleport right there? The twins. They, they were making a joke about American historical events. Okay, so this is Keita. He's actually kind of dressed and not on gear. Was this question too easy after all? My apologies. I was just thinking, well, I didn't even notice you there. Well, I'm going to accept my greetings. I'm Keita of the Masters of the Nightwind. Currently an apprentice here in charge of file management. Oh, interesting. Okay, so he joined the Cryo Tribe. Okay. What, what are you doing with the frozen carrots and what were you thinking about? Just a few simple questions regarding that one's past, present, and future. Completely unworthy of discussion. Judging by your appearance, you seem to be a traveler from afar. I can tell that your many friendships are deep and your knowledge broad. What do you mean by... Th okay. <sighs> Should you be willing, you try your hand at some of the questions I've already recorded. The answers to these questions lie within your journey, past, present, and future. I am. Oh, and you got a special icon. You are. I'm resolute and decisive, quite commendable. The entire point was the, was the double entendre. You can't claim innocence. You can't act like this. And not one Fulgiston may be found in many things. Yes, even in some plans. My question is, there's a type of flower that contains Fulgiston. What is it named? Ember fire flower, Ignifier, Ember core fire, a pirate ruby just spawned its Ember core. Indeed, completely flawless, not a single error. Well then, please continue to answer the next question. Above the flowing springs on the edge of the qua qua crashing waves. Oh. No microwave? People need to treat you better. You're cheerful, cheerful kind of people. Lovers of music gatherings and hot springs. Staying with them is sure to bring gladness. Co question is, who are the companions of the people of springs? What is their true name? Holacosaurus? No. Alpacas? No. Colohosaurus? No. Koholosaurus? Yes. Indeed, completely false. Not a single error. And the final question, they had something like this. It's Meru. Not what has a certain thing. It can be used for forging, for the making of records, and it even has different states. Sometimes it is liquid, other is solid. Moreover, this thing is silly. Not one full Oh. The question is, what's the name of that thing? Crystal beetles, for Gistin, water fun, ability for Gistin. Did you complete your fault? Send a single error. Oh, and we see the achievement icon pop up there over the dialogue. Yeah, it is. It is better like that. Your answers are flawless, perfect, with not a single error. Wisdom accompany you throughout your journey. Perhaps my questions are simply too easy. Yeah, maybe. Okay, so we're going to find the copybearer now. Avert your eyes, not one academic. Answer all the questions correctly during round of Kata's questioning. Okay. We're gonna go over collect of rewards, and I think I'll be using a Navia team. It. If other people complain, something might happen. As for now, the ge the general environment permits your misbehavior. Your malfeasance will be currently ignored. Okay. So over here, I think around one of these pools. This be the Night Soul Challenge. Not there. We climb up with Kachina. Don't worry, we know. We're more than aware. Oh my goodness, and of course we're stuck underneath this. But yep, right over there is one of these. 
bow and arrow? That might help the carrots defrost faster, actually. More surface area. Okay. Trial of Might during this trial, you can continually, continuously use attacks with higher interruption capabilities to interrupt opponents so they charge attacks. That's avoiding those powerful charge attacks, and there, he, there he is. Okay, so we actually need to fight this guy three times. What happened? What was the carrot issue? But are are they too cold for you that way? Wouldn't they be? Everything, everything I hear out of you just. Frightens me to no end. I worry about you, you know. Okay, well, got everything she needs right now. Carrot popsicle. So we should start this off with. Oh, he needs. We'll just battery him up real quick. Dragon to fire. It. Okay. I I'm not gonna question it. Come on. Oh, we missed. Big thing is... You know, I've heard of Italian ice, but not carrot flavor. Seems like everything's my fault these days. Okay, well. We try that letter stay on field to get her serpent spot stacks back. Good luck. I wonder as to the wisdom of that decision. But, interestingly enough, in Japanese, this guy's name is literally undead. Two, three, one, two, oh my goodness, okay. One, two, three, one, two, oh wow. Basically like an Italian popsicle. Okay, oh, alright. One, two, three, one, two. Three. Oh, I think we matched a stun. Yeah, we matched a stun. That's good. Okay. Cool. So, I... Big thing is, I need to go down and get a bowl of water. <laughs> I really do. Oh my goodness. Okay. That was worrying. No. Not at all. Huh. Big thing is... <sighs> need... Way more, but we also need good healing or shielding. But no, I mean, what? What I need right now is a bowl of water because the computer was overheating. Seems to be. I'll be right back. I need a bowl of ice. I'll be right back. Okay, we have the water. 
It, I, I think it'll be okay. Yeah. In, in light of things, I don't think you need to feel bad. Okay. The question is, how should I? Yeah. Didn't take all that long. Hmm. Just trying to think. What team do I have that can make good use? Honest to goodness. I'm thinking D Luke. Just trying to look at who uses Claymores right now. Who would be Claymore damage dealer? All right. We don't have to get into it entirely. Hmm. Honestly, y'all didn't have her issues. Hmm. Okay. So, Purina. Noel team, that could work. I don't mean to be dismissive, but. Guess we're going back to Noel. Just think. What team would work best? It's the copy Barra. And also, I need to try to battery her too, is the thing. Okay. Hmm. Goro. Beto. Noel. Yeah. Okay. It's a good amount of durability too, which is important. But it's up over here. Actually, kind of annoying to walk to. Whatever. Hmm. This should be a decent team to use. Serpent Spine, honestly. The boost of damage taken does not help. But the fact that this team has good healing, and Bennett's healing cap did not help either. Also, just the fact that Navia does build defense, and this team does stack defense. It should be good. That doesn't sound like you're complaining to me. Okay. I'm gonna wait for... Some of those stacks to reaccumulate. Noah's got her serpent spawn stacks, but she needs those husk stacks. Okay. Hmm. So in that case, I'm gonna get to it. Thank you. And boom. Thanks. And oh right, we gotta put you down over there. And hmm. still have some limits too. Three, one, two, three, four, 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 one, two. Oh, hmm. Got some energy issues on this team, though, is a thing. Hmm. You're just afraid. You're just afraid of things. Okay, and there we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And I definitely think we're not done a bit, but Furina's issues are. Yes? Those two things are not necessarily incompatible. You have to drop the tough act every now and then. Okay. Uh, let's put this down and... Uh, ooh, ooh. Oh, no. Goro just got one tapped? Okay, this is stupid, stupid. That doesn't mean I'm afraid. You couldn't beat this guy with a team of full C6 R5 characters. I wouldn't be talking if I were you. Hmm. So. Navi 
Lydia feels good damage, but it, the energy issues on this team are bothersome. No, but we can make educated guesses, and that's my educated guess. Huh. Hmm. Something that deals meaningful blunt damage. Just... <sighs> Claymore damage dealers with meaningful capabilities. That's tough. I guess I could maybe try a team with Beto on it. It's really just about having someone in there to last things down, but... If Dory was leveled, I could try a crazy Dory team. I will never meet you. We will never meet. <laughs> Honest to goodness, I think it's gotta be... D-loop with Zhongli, Xingzhou. Because Hu Tao is the most obvious option in that situation. Except for the fact that that team is not doing meaningful amounts of blunt damage. The Copybearer does not have an element. They're all... Sort of... Slightly blue by default. The Copybearer is completely non-elemental. <laughs> Well, then that case. Wonder why you act like this is something profoundly surprising or frightening. No. It's stealing physical. Hmm. You need. Sack Sword. Don't you always? Huh. Take that back from Goro. Suppose, actually, best way to make sure Goro relinquishes Fav is like this. And then Diolok needs Serpent Spine. We're just playing a long, complicated game of Pass the Serpent Spine today. Fine by me. Okay. Come on. And uh, that will be decent for now. But I'll... Sicily! Sounds more like hell sometimes. Honestly. But, as I was saying... The silliest way to beat this thing is by using Gene and just lifting and tossing it. <laughs> I might try that one time. But I want to beat it quote unquote legitimately at least once. I... This really does feel like Stockholm Syndrome to me. I... One, two... Three, one, two. Oh, you can be juggled relatively easily. That's nice. Okay. One, two, three, four, two, three, and finally. Except the damage on this team is not great. Okay. There we are. Okay. I think I have a reasonable perspective on things. To be totally honest with you. Okay, one, two. Ah, oh, come on. Mm -hmm. Sure, but some places require more adaptation than others. That is what I will say. And... Mm -hmm. Come on. One, two, three... There we are, and we did a good amount of bonus damage. Well, it, the Night Soul bosses are meant to be pretty crazy. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, one, two, one, two. Thanks. And oh, all right. What? Wow. Huh. Yeah, I think 
We're, we're gonna have to get silly with it. It... I... I don't care anymore. If you can kill Deluxe straight through that shield, though, I think the shield probably expired. We're, we're gonna... Adopt cheese tactics for this one. I think enough enough time has passed. But let me get damage windows. Well, actually, well, we'll figure stuff out. Either way, you can get your stupid serpent spine back. Okay. Huh. huh. Damn, Capybara got hands. Actually, it literally does not have hands. Never mind. Okay. So. Main thing is Navi is in here to knock it out of its charging state. We're just going to cheese this guy. And it's this one. Aloy will never be useful. There is no way for them to make Aloy useful without making another character much more useful. Her kit legitimately has no redeeming characteristics, and that's kind of the point. She was not meant to be good. She was in there to make Sony happy in exchange for Sony allowing people to transfer their saved data to other consoles. There, there is nothing good about her kit. Okay. All right. Thank you. I, huh? I didn't get to pull. Well, that's weird. Whatever. Thank you. Just. All right. And we shoot you up as high as possible. Good enough. Jean is a very niche character. It's fine, but it's true. There we are. And two Navia shots does it. Yep, just launch you straight up. Cool. Come on. Get in here. Get in here. That did not go as well. Okay. Thanks. One, two, one, two. Nice. Yeah, but you know who no one uses? Aoi. Because Aoi's kit has no redeeming qualities. And... Just wait until you get that maximum height. Launch you straight up. And that did even more damage. Nice. Thanks. One, two, three, four. Nice. And one more launch. And there we go. Alright. Wait, what? Can you not die from fall damage? Oh. That's funny. Yeah, I... That's interesting. Okay, now it worked. I don't know what was going on. Game hates me. And that's number one. Yep, I... Zero guilt. <laughs> Zero guilt. So now, what we have to do is beat it again without dying to its super attack, and then beat it while interrupting its super attack three times. That'll be... yeah. Well, it... it's supposed to be hard. Why didn't it let me do the hold? It's gotta be something with the start challenge's behavior. That screen that just presumably gets rid of all your inputs, maybe. Okay. Come on. And... Oh, okay. And that means... We're gonna burst up just to heal. Okay. That's good by me. And... Oh, come on. Wait, what? Two, three, four... Okay, for a second. Had a bit of an issue. It's gotta be a connection issue, honestly. Probably job-related. Ethernet-related. Let's, we have to use the Ethernet, and it probably uses up ridiculous amounts of data. 
Yeah, this is annoying. Okay, I oh, okay. One, two, three, four. Yep, there we go. I do not want to be hit by that stupid thing. Launch. Okay. Just gotta do that one more time. Okay. Come on. And launch the capybara. And weirdly laggy about that. Okay. So we just gotta make sure that we interrupt its super attack three times this next round. But we know what we're doing. Okay. If it works, it works. Okay. And there we go. Good damage. Let's see that one totem proxy over there, which is cool. Thanks. But in Chinese, they use basically just the characters for undying, which is different from undead. It, especially since sometimes it's just not taking fall damage. It's the weirdest part. Okay. Come on. Got to interrupt your attack two more times. Hmm. One, two, three, four. Thank you. We're gonna let you do that one more time. But you have to get those achievements and- Oh! Should probably be able to defeat it by inflicting the little bit of damage from knocking out of its attack. Yep, there we go. One, two, two, three, four, and... Huh? Oh my goodness. What is up with this god-awful connection? Okay, there we go. Maybe it just doesn't take that damage when... If it would kill it? Maybe. And there we go. All three achievements for... The funny capybara. And now you can see we've got... Two of this version 6... Way up proxies fully lit up. And they do have the same blue background color, at least for now. You know, it... whatever works. Whatever works. Let's collect our achievements real quick. Then... Yep, defeat he never dies. Defeat he never dies without getting hit by ultimate technique giant undying collision. Defeat he never dies after interrupting the charging of ultimate technique giant undying collision three times. The only way is about restless thoughts. But Lord of the Night is interesting, because the fact that it's centered on the big giant pillar in the middle of the Night Kingdom area we see kind of implies that whatever is in there is going to be the Lord of the Night, presumably will get unsealed after we. Oh. What up every totem? I don't imagine that the open world local legends would require that. And to be entirely frank, the totem local legends are a little easier if you have this sort of trick to deal with them. A lot of them are more puzzles than just... Pure fights, because, you know, Sappho, Kosijko, and Balachko, and the Polychrome Tri-Stars were the three Fatui Skirmisher local legends not around here somewhere. They have puzzle aspects to them too, but they're mostly just knock down, drag out fights. The Night Soul ones tend to be more puzzle-oriented. You, know, you don't have to be all that strong to beat them if you've got the trick, especially since with the Capybara, you, know, you can deal percentile HP damage by just inflicting Claymore hits after dodging its attacks and gradually whittle it down that way. But if you don't have good DPS, Koshijo, Balashko, Sappho, and the Tri-Stars are not really going to be great. Okay. So in that case, do a couple of reputation things, and yet be a bit of TCG. Main thing is, don't want to actually, I, in, theory, in theory I could take them straight to four, which is max level, by just doing all my bounties and supplies for them. 
but I actually don't want to because so you get 60% exploration here, I'll get 200 more. So I just want 400 right now. Sake of efficiency. Vulnerability of Hydro, I do not want that. Trope has decreased, interesting. Dual zone. Hmm. Animo res decreased, I need to... Animo? Crystal cores. Pen kill, North Korean High wants to tip Hickok Rise. I'm duking out with the tab of the Source Warrior, came back up with and Batter, then two days later I get a letter from my friend saying he didn't expect me to be a towering to pet with Source Warrior who knocks him around like a ragdoll. Both of us got beaten up by a tab of the Source Warrior, who even was that guy? Okay, some travel wars have been on edge. Source, huge heavy weapon, can't be that offensive right, just be itching for a fight. Okay. We can do two of these supply notices right now. Oh, we don't have enough cockapua tools, but we do have enough of these. And grain fruit, we do have enough of those. Okay. So. There's two bounties. Should be good. And it is nice that they have them in a sign instead of in a, an AoE, more or less. Not an AoE, an area. So this one is... Electro res decrease. So I guess I'll use a stupid Sethos team. Because I need to justify his existence. Okay. Scrows. Underleveled Kirara. And another fool. Okay. You have. We will give you Hakushin. He's not good. It doesn't make me happy. It gives me no joy to say it, but he's weak. Okay. Go ahead, cry. Okay. Wait until the bounty target appears. Literally speak for yourself. Okay, and oh my, oh my goodness. All right, and put you down, and thanks. One, two, one, two. We don't have any kind of solid healing here, which is unpleasant. Okay, I, oh, come on. Swirl and, all right, just like that. Slam and take it. One, two, one, two. I, do not kill me, please. Please do not kill me. And, well, we barely did it. That, that's good. That's healthy. This one is resistant to... Weak to Animo. Vulnerable to Cryo, weak to Animo. And, I guess that's Zhao team time. I mean, the team is usable. Won't be winning any prizes. Hmm. It doesn't help that Kira does not have any constellations, which her constellations help her out a lot. Sethos's constellations don't help him out much. Well, the thing with Sethos is that he's really just official driver anyway. Oh well. Hmm. You. 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 Well, it- garbage can be usable. The two categories are not mutually exclusive. Hmm. He's in the position of usable garbage. Oh, come on. No, seriously, what is up with the way things are right now? Whatever. One, two, mm. come on. Everyone, get your stuff back. All right, just collect that. Mm. Over there, we have our bounty. Question is, do I do signs of the canopy or people of, or I mean, children of echoes next? Given that I'm leaving people to spring stuff right now. Okay, perilous. Always perilous. There you are. Cool. And, oh my goodness. Swirl. One. Hit. And, one, two. 
Thanks. Jump. Jump. I let's kill the other guys too, just for fun. And one, two, three, four. There we go. Nice. Okay. And healing's gone. I think I'll do Sons of the Canopy next. Given that I suppose, you know, the sort of release order of their five stars is Hydro, Dendro, Geo. What do you mean, weird Disney shows? I'm wondering to what you are referring to at the moment. Kinesia's deal, not available yet. We can pick up one. Oh, okay, so that's basically the same ones each week, but... Okay. There's warriors, let their tribes roam around outside. That's run supplies. Eastern Riverbank, Amayalco, Touring the Church, quite a hit. Let other merchants continue to suffer. Cable and scope driver away. Crivers decrease. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Oh, okay, so it's the same ones. It's actually... A lot more interesting. Huh. Oh. Well, I think that comes to mind, I suppose, would be Rathesley. But where are the Cockohottles? The Chocolatles. Actually, I have it around here. There's one that I can just pick up, and I suppose I will. Suppose it's grain fruit. The chocolate and one of the specialties every given week. I guess that makes some sense. Okay. Should be exactly one down here that'll just pick up and use. Actually, two. Oh, here he is, that guy. Oh, looks like the Mountain King Flame Brats finally have ripened up. What a relief. So, you two, what's up? Hunting and going in, be quick about it. Don't let anyone from Trap see you. Not right now. Is that so? Sure you don't want to go in and take a look at the Mountain King Flame Brands, even just a little peek off. It's been much better after a good long look at them, so if you ever feel troubled, I recommend you do the same. Take these, and then... Toss Rathesley at this bounty. So otherwise, I don't know who I could use in terms of Cryo, who's recent. That also means getting to use... MOE... The uh, Nahida team, too. Okay. There we are. Gotta remember to give Emily back Deathmatch from Ja because Crescent Pike is not doing anything for any of them. Okay. That will be Bounty Progress for the week, then. Hmm. But yeah, very, very close to getting everything I need for Toyak. Does mean one of those blazing flint ores, which presumably is going to be Pyro Traveler Constellation material? Okay, well. Mm -hmm. What I'm wondering is. That does not break that then. So some of them are just gonna fall off, which is good for. Oh, and that dealt some level of AoE. Oh, it's because of the balloons. Okay. Now I see. Alright. Well, honestly, we'll knock you onto somewhere with no water or something, maybe. Can I knock you down into the water? Yeah, this should do. Come on. And that did the trick. I guess we could find these Kaholosaurs, too. Okay. Come on. Get Virgin. And hit. Two, three, four. Well, actually, I also should have presumably put Fida to get on you. But, of course, the more Saurians we beat, the more. Come on. Materials we'll have for Keenich when he shows up. Needs those Saurian mats. Okay. Just go and turn in our. Cacao beans. That is, I believe, what the cockapwattles are. Okay. And there we are. Cool. Hmm. Decent enough. 
we could get 200 more from here. Thank you, I'm glad you, I'm glad you liked it. Do you, perchance, need any help with any farming right now? I would be more than happy to offer it up. But if not, I'm going to be going to do the Four Drums Temper Challenges for this month. Well, for this patch cycle. But between the last time I saw you and this time, I also did the new Hardest Mode on Theater. Oh, okay, fair enough. Have you tried Visionary Mode yet? It's interesting. Rather tough. Okay. Just for research. So. Do our weekly matches. That's the interesting Navia deck. It's got four proficiency. It's interesting. It definitely requires a lot of thought. And a lot of characters, of course. The big thing for me is... As cool as the blessings are, I found it more important to prioritize getting more characters. Oh, damn, are you okay? Sorry to hear that. That sucks. Hope you feel better soon. Hmm. Starts out with Electro Application. Honestly, the best move might be using yeah, yeah. Mr. Hillitro over here. Let's see what happens. In that case, just gotta figure out who and what to put on whom. Oh, wow! I didn't know that Fireball and Sprite was a popular combination. I... Or is it? Or were you, were you... Were you experimenting? Either way, I... Hope you get better soon. Yeah, it does sound pretty tasty. So we're going to use Trigger and Electro. Charge Reaction. That will get me some energy. Okay, so what kind of attacks are this, is this guy going to use? I'm going to damage it out. Presumably, they'll use... You all be intro or something? Maybe. Mmm, we're probably going to get hit by a strong overload or something like that. Interesting. Yep, we're going to get hit by a shot. Oh, yeah, that, that'll do it. Huh. So no elemental damage dealt from their side of the round. AI it really is going easy on me, though. Hmm. Just trying to think out what I need to put down. Huh. Should presumably get a little more in here. When Fischl presumably uses Oz, but... Get a few more dice. I want to do a bit of tuning. Hmm. Put that down. Use another. Keep that... Spread damage going, always nice. Tenchikaku is good as well, but... Main question is... Do I go for the burst? I'm not sure I do. Got a few more cards there. Another Tenchikaku going down would be good for us. Maybe even... I'm not sure about the Leeway Harbor, though. I think what I'll do then is hope they switch back out so that I don't have to worry about that Hydro getting kind of wasted by. Because when the low end disorder sort of applies an element at the start of the round, if that reaction is not going to deal damage to their team, it's going to cleanse it and that would kind of waste the application. But this Miss Bubble Slime is good. It's going to work very well with Navia. So we'll put that on Navia. This technique, which allows her to twice use basically some free hydro application combined with immobilizing an enemy, which. Oh, well, we're. Oops. That got wasted. Oh, well. Hmm. Big thing is, is that. Official being on their side does not really actually do much for them. Because that can't react with the electric get that gets applied to us automatically. Yeah, also, I did pretty well last time when I was on for the heated battle mode challenges. Given that... Hmm. So what are you going to use? I won two out of three of my matches and I could have won the third one, except I was... Forgot that techniques cost a round to use. And I ended up healing and then getting killed by an opposing Sucrose when I otherwise could have killed that Sucrose and the other team. 
Because I was using Johnny's technique, which is just her Star Wicker and therefore is a heal. Hmm. It was disappointing. Huh. Think. Oh. Okay, but they're out, which means we could use this for some Hydra application and therefore charging up some other Navia abilities. There we go. That technique is gone, but we've got some good application. Main thing is we can do some good stuff with this infusion there. And I... We could try putting Bell on her, but I don't know. That will not deal the damage I would have wanted it to. This does. But of course, after worrying. Hmm. Coal source is an interesting option, but maybe treasure seeking seal. It's just all about maintaining momentum, is the thing. Hmm. Honestly, I think it might have to be between Cease and Mage. It's not that this is much of a serious fight, but it's not fun to lose cards if I can avoid doing it. Hmm. It's been a while since I last had Fireball. Last time I had Fireball was, I think, four years ago, actually. At... I think some people broke it out at a party a couple of years ago, but I just didn't have it. But, okay, so the piercing damage did not hurt much there. One season... Yeah, well, it's... Not a huge drinker. So, what can he use? Last time I drank was a little over a year ago, actually, in Europe. And given how ridiculous everything went in Europe that one time, I just kind of laid off afterwards. May have been a little cowardly of me, but... You know, it's one of those kinds of things that you take as a sign, for better or worse. So I think... How much damage will the burst do? Season shield... Hmm. Oh, but we also get the Surging Thunder attack. Fair enough. That cackle is insane. So, use that. I like how they have the little lantern icon for that too, and Season Mage will finish them off, and quite frankly, the elemental application at the start of each round was more of a problem than a benefit for us. What was so bad about the music? Was it all American stuff that you didn't like? Okay. Go for this. We should be able to get the last character card skin. Hmm. Kahoa Source won't do all that. Ah. If we're doing season stuff, actually, I could see Kahoa Source being useful as a way to ensure application for Navia, maybe? Maybe. Yeah, that, when I went to Europe, two of the guys in the choir just straight up got lost. On the first night over there. They had too much to drink and got left behind at the restaurant. And it just got lost. That makes me sad to hear. Because I wouldn't really have expected that. I think putting down a Tenshukaku should be a good option. We don't need to stay on. Not switch if we don't want to. Oh. Yeah, that'll that'll do it. Hmm. Since we haven't discarded... Okay, we can draw a few Crystal Shrapnel cards. That's very, very nice. Good stuff. Okay. I think actually we'll get rid of that and just inflict to kill. Should be fine, and we can crystallize with her burst next time, too. That surprises me. You know, bad music is one thing. Bad music it sounds like cartoon music is another. Well, it... Well, you just like Inazuma 11 openings. I don't think that's a fair point of comparison. Or do you? Do you? I don't know 
I don't know how to answer that question. Mm. We will deal a nice hit to you. Thank you. So probably a bit more crystal shrapnel next time around. The damage of that might actually be more than I want. Huh. Well, that's life. I have a couple of cards to toss. Well, that's why I was asking. I didn't know, and I needed you to answer me. There's only so much I can know without being informed. That is how these things tend to go. Hmm, so much damage. Ooh, we got the bell. And that is quite nice. So Navi actually might be decent there. Oh, hmm. Ah, uh, that's going to be a very dead Navi. That, okay. But, we can at least use that to pivot out to you, and then cast that. Can't do much there, but we can always put this down. Is that? Okay, for a second I thought that was Iggy. Iggy from JoJo. JoJo Part 3, which... Okay. Now I feel like I need to give my obligatory JoJo take, which is... That there is no such thing as a bad JoJo part, but evaluated as a... Actually, I would say that the worst JoJo part, and that's not to say that any of them are bad, because all of them are good. The least good JoJo part is... Either part 8 or part 3. But both of them need context. Because the deal with JoJo Part 3 is that it's kind of like how people in America say that you really do. That Seinfeld isn't funny, quote-unquote. And it's because it was so important in its context that everything it did feels cliched just because everything else copied it. And, well, I would sadly say that... Jojo Part 3, or even Jojo in general, is probably not as influential, at least outside of Japan, as Seinfeld was on American comedy. You know, the, the stand... The stands were introduced in Part 3, and that became the defining factor of the Jojo series after the first two parts being all about weird, supernatural martial arts with a bunch of hit or miss, though I liked it. I personally liked them. Attempts to basically explain them using pseudo-scientific phenomena because they were basically solar-powered martial arts and they would constantly try to explain through pseudo-scientific means well yeah that's the hamon which means wave or ripple in japanese those solar-powered martial arts you know you did a breathing pattern that allowed you to emulate the power of the sun it was this weird woo-woo kind of thing not in a bad way it was interesting but it was objectively is objectively woo. Well, it... That's like the one guy who on the Hunter Hunter subreddit tried to convince everyone there that he managed to learn Nen in real life and everyone just mercilessly mocked him. It's... I would imagine that your friend was kidding. I hope. Okay, so we'll put this down, and that means we can use this for free, basically. Well, ah, the annoying thing is, is that we drew another Electro Season Mage card instead of drawing Navia's Talent card, which is annoying. Mm -hmm. Still get a Crystallized off and good damage and a shield too, but the question yep. is, are you going to stay in or are you going to switch? It's tough. That might actually determine whether I play more cards here or go for a shot. That's fair. Like the D&D &D spell. I've thought about the idea of running and streaming D&D, &D, in part just because it's been so long since I was last able to run D&D, &D and I miss it badly. Hmm, at least we use our cards a bit, our dice a bit more effectively. Efficiently. But I saw that... Have you ever heard of the... 
West March's style of D&D campaign. Basically, the idea behind it is that it's a D&D &D campaign that doesn't require its entire group to show up every single time. And... Is she gonna burst? That is annoying. Okay, well... If we just go for a single shot, it's not gonna crystal hands, but we can eliminate Yai. And that's nice. Uh, the idea is basically that you start out and plan out a world, more or less. I bet Kokomi's gonna kill. Is Kokomi gonna kill? If she uses... Yeah, that's... Okay. Alright. Oops. But, one thing I can do... I could use... Her skill, maybe. Hmm. Tough to say. I think I'm gonna use the skill, especially since Belle won't do a single thing for me anymore. Because we can use... Basically, having Storm Terror's lap basically allows us to use talent cards as ways to use actions for less, which is nice. And that helps a bit, but the annoying thing is, is that that application will not help next round. It's just Electro and more Electro. But effectively, the idea behind it is you build a setting and whoever wants to show up in a given session can. And you don't need a consistent group, and things basically go on in the world, even without the players doing things, so to speak. And I like that. I like that a good deal. Total reaction damage loses one usage. Action card boosts the usages. Hmm. I... May as well put one down, gives me more dice, too. And the question is, do I... I definitely want to use my burst here. Then after that, I think I can use Hydro Hilatral Room skill. Yeah. It the one thing about it is, and it's definitely a necessary consequence of that broke the shield. You know, it's generally the kind of thing where works well with streamers or you know, streamers running it, streamers playing it, because it does not require everyone to be available every time. But, personally, I like character-driven stories. Which is why I honestly do kind of have some personal distaste for it. Because it requires the story to be largely villain-driven, or at least NPC-driven. It's hard to really have real character arcs for characters when you can't guarantee any character showing up and don't necessarily want to. It, it's a matter of personal taste, like most things, but... Hmm, Crystal Shrapnel, Event Guard. It, I think I might end up running one because I would probably have to do it if I wanted to stream D&D for various reasons. But not necessarily because it's specifically the kind of campaign I want to specifically run. If that makes sense. Well, we could attach this to somebody. And then proc another reaction on one of you. That would be nice. Oh, okay. This one is lasting a while. Put this technique on you. Oh, but that's the issue that I... Oh, but that's right. It only takes one die of any type. That's right. So we're jamming. If I said what doesn't... Hmm. Use this. And then I suppose put the season down. That's fine. And we're just going to use that for more hydro application. What's really great is just the ability to deal <laughs> elemental damage of a type other than the characters while off field. Yeah, yeah. Well, then I would wholeheartedly disagree, and I might even call you a fool. Maybe. But as I was saying, it's very, very tough to make character driven stories with that method of with that kind of campaign. Well, I mean, what would you prefer me do? Just 
do a dogaza and start crying. It. Do you want help with the boss? The offer is on hand. What is Kokomi doing here? Uh, and, a, and a cleanse. Okay. Mm -hmm. Actually, just doing normal hits will do the trick too. Maybe weave some dice in case Ito uses the burst. Okay. Yeah, the dandelion flowers, dandelion seeds are very, very annoying to get. They are one of the reasons why I still have not leveled Eula. The other reason is just, though to be fair, the fact that bosses drop more mats out definitely helps. And the fact that they also give a lot more artifact leveling materials also helps. But... When new characters come out, characters who I get and want to level and use can often be rather difficult for me to justify leveling Yua and not just letting her stay at level 70 like she has right now. Also, it's just the Pale Flame set I have right now. Fremine uses it a bit better than she does, I would say. Especially since... Also, Fremine just has an incredibly unique playstyle, which, for better or worse, is honestly more effective than yours at this state in the game. Because he actually works quite well with a Dendro. I have a team of Fremine, Xingqiao, Nihita, Shinobu that I run every now and then for niche cases, but it's really, really strong in those niche cases. We are going to figure this out. But one thing it's really, really useful for is fighting the supercomputing array in the northeast of Fontaine. Because it's got Numa and Blunt damage, and just good damage. Well, we're going to use our Slash of Surging Tides and get some Hydro on Sara right now. Go ahead. Get some elemental damage on me too. Maybe. Or not. Hmm. She's probably going to use Bolts of Downfall as the thing. Hmm. Hard to say. And I've kind of got myself in a bad situation here. Because if I use... Do some tune and convert this into a slash... It's not going to apply any new elements. It's going to pop the Transformer. Hmm. Yeah, it... Social drinking can be fun. But to be totally honest, I have not really regretted no longer drinking. It can be tough around pushy people. Pushy and irritable people. Especially when they're in family. I'm not talking about my immediate relatives. When they try to get you to drink, but it's just sort of... <sighs> and I think it's always important to contextualize things, and one of them is just... I am lucky in that I would consider myself a sociable enough person that I don't often feel like I need alcohol to give myself confidence and courage. But I still respect... Or at least try to respect people who do need that little boost. But... As time has gone on for me... And you know, it's dumb for me to be saying, oh, I'm old, old. I'm an old man. I've got one foot in the grave when I'm in my early 20s. But it's... It's never too early to start taking care of your body. Especially since the earlier you start doing it, the earlier it pays dividends. But it... It's always difficult to strike a balance between... Caring about people's health and being a busybody. Well, that's what I mean, is that I don't. <laughs> you know, for better or worse, I am young. But... That just means, I would say... That the longer I do take care of my health, the more time I'll have to enjoy it. 
Especially since, you know, I've talked about it before, but I also just have weird taste in food. I tend to think that things that are quote-unquote healthy actually taste better because I'm weird. Yeah, yeah. That? Yeah. Fair enough. Okay, so we are going to go for a slash on Ayaka, but we'll keep that. So we already got the talent. We can leave that there just to tune. You know, I'll take it. It's good a compliment as anyway, and any... And, mm. huh. Honest to goodness, it might be better to switch to Navia so that... Okay, well, maybe never mind. Just sort of try to eat Elmato application. But honestly, maybe I want to go for the Sis and Mage so I can put more down. This team is interesting, but I feel like Navia really needs a team based around card draw and make it work well. Yeah, not everything. Yeah, you did just eat a bunch of still frozen carrots. Or at least you tried to, and then they unfroze because Sicily is the tenth circle of hell. Well, actually... No, wouldn't it be the first? Maybe the zero? Because, you know, the ninth circle of hell is the coldest. That actually wouldn't make all that much sense. God help me. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Just see, what are we gonna get? Okay, that will help me use that a little more easily. For a bit less of a card toss. And then I suppose we could try hitting the crystal shot, maybe. Or not. Ooh, that was good. And yet, that's the power of that talent card. The issue is, if she takes the reaction damage, we're going to get less... Uh, less uses of this. So what am I willing to part with at the moment? I'm going to part with this card, because it is only useful for tuning right now. Oh, that's right, it's time to use the burst. Let's make this happen. Big news for incredibly troublesome people. Got that going, and... What's annoying is that this is going to kill. It's going to kill the rogue, and I have no way around that, but I also don't have a way to use this, because I can't switch. I have to end the round. That's going to kill me. Hmm, whatever. <sighs> Alright. I mean, I'll live, but it's still tough. Can get a crystallize off with Navi, and that's a bit more durability too, but still. At least I'm first this round. This might be tough. Sara's actually a team built around Sara. Sara teams are actually really annoying to deal with if they're played correctly. Hmm. Question is who I want to attach this to? I should wait. So that's a good hit. And if you switch to Ayaka or something, you could use a burst on that crystallize too. Well, it also just deals piercing damage. Go ahead, switch to your Ayaka. Try to get a reaction off on me, stupid AI. Yep, it's... It's, a, uh, It's done for. So... Both of them just have one left, which means unless they've got some pocket healing... It would be awfully difficult for them to actually kill me this round. Especially since my shield from that crystal eyes prevents. Oh, and you propped this too. Good news for me. So we will just take out Sara. And then what can Fischl do to me? What can Fischl even do to me? Go ahead, use a normal. Go ahead, use a normal. Yep, okay. So now we can use Itos, and well, that does not mean... Oh, what that means is incredible levels of disrespect. I'm going to kill you with a bubble. Come on, come on. One hydro damage. Goodbye. <laughs> it's so vile. It's so vile. But, techniques are really, really good. But, the only ones that have elemental application are locked behind bursts. Either Jeanyun's burst, or the Star Wicker, which deals animo, converts plunge, and 
the Hydro Bubble behind the Hydro Culture Rogues burst, because there are three ones that are not elemental. One of them is even damaging. It's the Xenochromatic Manta Rays, but... Hmm. So we'll pick this up. Epic Cloud Retainer Moment. Equipment cards, and we'll take this, even though I do not use it. Just got these two techniques, and... Good stuff. Yukasaurus is, of course. Right, we need to check. Oh, but it's an equipment. Right. Okay. Hurtful Grapple. Deal one physical damage. Okay, so two of them deal damage. Steal one card with the highest dice cost. That is interesting, but it's really, really only good in PvP. Hmm. Boy, it's Candle of Life. Everyone card you draw. Character opponent defeated uses a burst. Or on the element dice. By the end of the first round. The big thing is that almost always... New characters, the characters they introduce, are going to be good. And I would imagine that what they mean by that is... This one is for the Hydro Hilitral Rogues. Presumably, even if it wouldn't damage or immobilize, you could trigger Frozen. Get energy back faster on. This Cryo Slime, because when its skill triggers Frozen, it gets one more energy. And can charge its burst straight from 0 with 1... Scythe Slash. Hmm, and this... takes one damage. I... It's got to be Techniques. Yeah, if you used... Jean Yun and... The Hydro Hilitral Rogues Bursts... It would allow you to inflict damage. Minor amounts of... Minor takes the damage very quickly. But the funny thing about this is that... Yoimiya would actually be good here, too. But also just... It's 16 HP. You could just kill that thing. <laughs> yeah. Honest to goodness. It'd probably be easier to just kill it before the end of round 3 than survive till the end of round 3. Use a fixed deck and elemental dice to duel. It's damage to all opposing characters. After this, end of the first round, deal one piercing damage at all opponents. So in theory, if there are four opponents in total, you could deal a maximum of three, four damage dealt because it's one for free, and then if three of them are defeated, the one that survives last will take in four damage in total. But it's all about using this specific deck. Hmm. So it's purely a puzzle. What I imagine, though, is that it's all about getting stuff done with Kaya. Sort of. I get the feeling that Ike is kind of a trap. What you want to do is more or less use Kaya's burst to allow you to deal chrono damage on Switch. Then combine that with the Hydro Hiltral Rogue being able to deal good damage on a switch. I mean, being able to get more energy on a freeze with its skill. But it doesn't tell me the dice I get. It said, I think I actually want to try this one first. Just to see. So this is a puzzle with one solution. Huh. I... I honestly cannot imagine that Ayako would be better than Kaya here starting. Especially since he has one energy starting out for some reason. This... Hmm. Crickling Bubble. One of those, and we have 11 dice starting out. Got a Mist Bubble Slime. It's gotta be about freezing, and oh, the fact that, welcome back, the fact that every single one of them has one of those. I imagine that the best way to use these dice economically is technique use with each one, maybe, and then, hmm, but it's all about applying those elements is the thing. You definitely have to start off. 
with the Frost Gnaw. But I don't even know if Kai would even use his burst. Hmm. That's what irks me. Hmm. I would agree with that. In what specific way are you referring to right now? Okay. Use this. Trap you. I'm gonna see how well this works. I honestly don't imagine this is... Too... Hmm. Who's next? Hilltrol Fighter. I guess we could just use this again. It's all about applying elements for additional damage, maybe? This is interesting. But for your jump and hit... Oh, yeah, it... It's silly. I try not to pay too much attention to politics these days. Oh, but... Ah, create one Omni element, one number of dice you have is zero. Definitely have to use this, but none of them are freezing me. So that's sort of a option in case of last resort, maybe? That's tough. Huh. Cryo damage creates one icicle. Two cryo damage, but... Huh. I am... Rather confused. This creates one on the element die, which we could use to... But not Fontamere Water Blades. <sighs> I actually, I think I know. We need to restart this, and I think we use Fontamere Water Blades on Kaya. Okay. Yeah, it. It sucks. It. What I will say is that a lot of the discourse on that topic is very disingenuous. Because. Personally, I would consider myself, as someone who studied politics, to be an international relations realist in the sense that, generally speaking, the powers of the world are going to be acting in self-interest. And... So what would secure a kill? Fontemere Waterblade. And, as paradoxical as it might sound, one of the things that is often in one's self-interest is to portray oneself as idealistic. Even or especially when that is not the case. And it's just sort of basically saying, you know, I'm helping such and such group, such and such ally because I believe in... Oh, oh no, that's not a... Okay, and given that we have that... Clearly what we need to do is to get a kill on the slime by playing the Edict. Edict, Fontemere Water Boy, and then kill with a Frost Gnar. Mm. This really is tough. But... You know, it's in one's self-interest to be you know, disingenuous about one's intentions. And to basically say, I'm helping you because I'm, you know... An idealistic person, I believe in peace and justice, and then end up having very self-interested motives, you know. Henry Kissinger said, infamously, to be an enemy of America is dangerous, but to be a friend is fatal. And I think that in this situation, it's may be a bit more accurate than would be nice to think. Either way, we're gonna go with our water blades. Thank you. And then we can go for a nice quick hit. That will take out a few of them. But the question is what I do next. That's piercing damage. Hmm. Next option then. Got to be... Oh, it's tough. How am I going to... Get over there? 
It's gotta be Ayaka with the bubble tactics. There's no way around that. Maybe. The issue is how do I make sure that it stays in on the boxer? There is no way, is there? Okay, that... It's a matter of trying to focus fire the boxer, because that's when the chain reaction can start. But it... It's legitimately vile. I like that this one is purely a puzzle to solve, but I would not... I cannot lie, it's... A bit bothersome. Hmm this on you but the only thing that this is going to give me is one singular on the element die which is going to work for this but not much else I really wonder as to how I'm supposed to use this huh getting close but who can I make this work on Big thing is, I would imagine that the bubble is actually better used on you, maybe? I really don't know. This is gone, but... Huh. Yeah. It's about trying to figure out a way to focus fire the Fitui Skirmisher. Oh, nice! Yeah, it. When I fought Animo Hypostasis, what I did was. I actually used Hu Tao with Viridescent, which is one of the silliest ever character builds I've ever used that has ever worked in any way. So the idea was basically just buffing up the swirls down. It was silly. Huh. I. I feel like Kaya Burst has to be involved, but so would Ayaka's, and if we have all of these cards, I cannot imagine that any of them would not get used. But here we are. Hmm. legitimately very very tough the big thing is, is that we start off on the hydro helical rowing that's a wasted turn because it can't do a meaningful amount of damage yeah, yeah. I did that is already wasted that's already wasted yeah but what I will say in regards to war is that in any situation I think you can always understand the situation better by you know with the saying rich man's war poor man's fight and that regardless of the lofty ideals behind any conflict it's always going to end up being some bro guy getting sent to kill some other bro guy for reasons neither of them necessarily fully agree with or understand and that to fully dehumanize anyone no matter how loathsome ends up very dangerous in the end okay so how am i going to big thing is edict is only going to be all that useful if staying in on a character is what helps me. I feel like it's gotta be Glacial, Glacial Waltz with Kaya. I really can't imagine what else it would be. Especially since... I mean, Gondarbaville is... If it's once per round, that's basically waste. The only thing I can do is tune. And once I get this one done, I would be happy to help you with the hypostasis. Just give me a second. I might even break out the... Viridescent Utau. Huh. The Edict. We're gonna use Edict. And then... If 
Cross Knight is an option. Well, I think the fact that that forces a switch is actually going to be good for us. Mm-hmm. I guess we could use this to tune, I suppose. Icicle is interesting. Come on. So we switch over to you. That inflicts a bit of a decent amount of damage. Then I think the option is actually to use these. Because that would allow us to deal a Hydro hit, which would allow me to kill on the switch. But, hmm, really rather a conundrum. Ah! Fontemere Blades. Gonna be good here. Use those blades. Take that one out. Thank you, I... I am not sure whether I believe in myself right now. But, oh, and the other thing is just... Hmm. This would also kill. It's not much of a real difference, but... I get the impression that you want to make use of every single character's abilities, but it could easily be a red herring. Just get... It's tougher and tougher to kill that one guy. Well, I will take a short break to help you out with your boss runs. Oh, legitimately. It was vile. Except for the fact that... You have to win by the end of the first round. Is that it's it's deterministic. It's a puzzle with one or just a couple solutions. Okay. So I'll join real quick. I'll help you out. Main thing is... To actually... Well, presumably... Could also... Honestly, I think I'll focus on... Some kind of just base damage. It's just who's a good bruiser? Rathesla is a decent enough bruiser. I guess Milani could work too. Actually, you know, we're just gonna run Nuviat in here. That is more than fine with me. It's never bad. Okay. Let's make this happen. Okay. Main thing is, gotta keep him off field. Oh, and I got another refine for Nuviat's. Battle pass weapon too, which is real nice. I did not mean to do that. Come on. One, two, three. Oh, well, I... That was unpleasant. I... You might not have been here for it, or you might not have heard, but I did pick up Dia's C1 from the free five-star event, which was nice. Definitely needed that. Five, six, seven, eight, and there we are. That good. So we just get our orbs. Mm -hmm. So you said you were rolling for a Mavuika, right? What other not one characters might be might you be hyped for? You know, I don't want to say too much about weeks, but as dumb as it sounds, one character I feel kind of hyped for is the possibility right now of maybe a Wanderer alt coming out soon. Possibly. Because there, there are some people saying that there's a chance that the Wanderer plotline hinted at in the Simulanka event is going to get a bit more elaboration soon. The big thing is that we've seen, we've seen Satlali, we've seen, well, Keenich is next week. And I will be rolling for him, but Jion is next patch then. In terms of the characters we've seen, but... Don't have announcements for yet. We have Satwali, Yansan, Chaska, Mavlika, maybe Shibalanke, though people are unsure about that one. And oh, we we might need to get farther away to make him respawn. That flower is not back yet. Oops. I think if we're gonna have to repeat that run real quick. Statue? Oh, okay. That makes sense. Gotta head farther away to reload it. So this should work. 
But have you done Dia's story quest? I probably have asked this question already, but I do maintain that it's probably the best story quest in the game. It... And I think part of it is just... Not to spoil too much, but they've used the sort of plot device that they used in Dia's story quest a number of times since. And including in Baiju's... To not say too much, and it's gotten a little old since. But... And the first time I encountered it, it was very poignant. Again, not to say too much about what was going on there. Come on. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm. A couple more should do it, but I think we were, he was having some issues regenerating. Health, maybe? Well, that boost should help. Okay, come on. Here we are, and one, two, three, four, five, six. We did not have enough time for that. Animal one is honestly annoying. And that bothers me. Come on. And that didn't hit either. Now that's just weird. Okay, okay. It's just, in terms of pure damage that does not roll out of reactions, it's hard to get much better than Nuviant, but still. Mm -hmm. so, you know, last time I helped you out, I was running Milani, and that was fun too. But it's... You know, she wants to run Vape. Also, I've, my Milani is meaningfully stronger than she was the last time I used her and helped. So that should help. How many runs in total? What do you like? Okay. Maybe we'll go over here. And interesting enough. Oh, nice. So, okay. So you're trying to get her to 80. That... Depends on world level, because... You may or may not know this. Because the only way to really know it is to check the wiki, but... She needs specifically... Any crowd control character can crowd control enemies up to... 20 levels above them. So you only really need a level 90, or at least that final ascension, if you have gotten to max world level. So that's when you would need... to crowd control things that were over level 100. It's the only time you would need that final ascension. And I was finding the copybearer in that one earlier, and that was a real fun fight. And I use Jean very heavily in that fight. Because it can be crowd controlled. It takes very nice damage when you manage to inflict full damage on it. To the point that it's probably the best way to do the fight. But, but, the thing about it is. You need that final ascension because, at least on world level 9, it's level 103. Which means that at level 80, you will not be able to get that crowd control off on it. You only need level 83, but you can't get to level 83 unless... ...you've gotten that final ascension. But it was really, really funny, because that, that strategy made the fight go from one of the most ridiculous in the game... Because it was busting straight through Noel shield, Zhongli shield, and what was the defense and healing. You know, it, at the very least, it was not the kind of fight you could deal with by just staying on it and hitting it. You always had to pay attention and dodge occasionally. The teams I was using were too sort of fireworksy, for lack of a better word. I guess the word would be flashy. They were way too flashy to really see things all that well. And that made things a bit annoying, because... I tried starting out with a Navia team, and that did work decently in terms of damage, but I just was not in a good place to actually dodge it. But I did end up keeping Navia on the team in the end, because what she was specifically good for was doing blunt damage quickly. Because doing blunt damage or just high interruption res attacks in general was the best way to stun it out of its super attack. And 
No, the whole deal is just being able to inflict. That's good teamwork. Lots of bullet damage quickly. He spam her two crystal shot charges and then use a little normal combo. So she's really, really good at interrupting its attacks. I wasn't running her for damage at all, because all the damage was coming from Jean just doing her holdy and launching the copy bear as straight up as I could. But just in general. It worked quite well. The only characters who mattered on that team were Navia and Jean. And it is very, very interesting because if you look at, if you look at the name card for the ten new and having ten new local legends in a patch, even first patch in a region is crazy in the best way possible. I still maintain that local legends were the best decision the whole you ever made in terms of the game's longevity. In terms of permanent content, because I will regularly log on just to fight them, just for fun. And that was even before they boosted their drop rate. Because by boosting their drop rate, they also made them a legitimate way to farm materials. Which just makes the grinding experience so much more fun. It was a really, really great decision, and the funny thing is, is that they put that out in 4.5, which was the Chiori patch, which otherwise is kind of a dead patch. And they just dropped the update and update on drop rates for local legends right there and made them a viable way to farm on an otherwise absolute nothing burger patch that literally had well to be fair i actually really liked the potions event but it was a mini game event without much in the way of lore it had less lore than the 4.7 real-time strategy event is at least real that one hinted at Jean's mom coming back. And, well, not really much else, but at least talked about Jean's mom. And... It... And there we go. But the potion event, the potion minigame, was still... Though, to be fair, I started playing during Yule's patch, so I've missed a decent amount. But out of the patches I've played, because I've been perfect attendance since... In my opinion, it's been the best minigame. Because they made a whole patch signature event around that minigame and that minigame alone. Which meant they were really able to go into detail and at length with every single part of it. It was just a lot of fun. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, Chen Yu. Not long. And someone, understandably, is putting off Arniaka. Cannot say I blame you. Oh, interesting. And Konami and well, to be fair, underground mines are a little mandatory for story progress. You have a lot to look forward to in Enconomia, then. Okay. So, if... Okay, okay. It, I'm happy to help. Glad I could be of use. So, in that case, I'm going to go back and bash my head against the TCG challenges. And then probably do a... Hopefully a good amount of the Geo Tribes quests. But... <sighs> But in terms of the remaining Night Souls, I've done the Capybara, and I've done the basically freeze and launch Hydro Constructs one. The only ones I've got left are the Parry one, the Perfect Dodge one, the f Shooting one for the one you have to fight waves of enemies, and then last one. Hot Little's Blessing, Chamali's Shade. What look you and the grapple point one. Nice. That will hopefully help out. I again happy to help. Uh send that focuses on card draw. Fremine is this patch, and that is a somewhat obvious option. Forge Realm's temper. Temper challenge. That one is interesting. One candle of life. Opposing character uses a skill. One card you draw. Next time they deal damage. 
I really do feel as if it's got to be from an A. But in terms of drawing cards, hmm. it. I can't say as much as I might like. I guess I could check your display characters real quick. Let me see. Weapons. Fab Sword's a good option. Vivi's a good option. I'm silly about it. I mean, she's a support character. What I would say is just... If you could, crit rate instead of crit damage, because... I tend to prefer crit consistency to big but very rare crits. And just generally speaking, unless you really, really want to go sort of God's Greatest Gamblers on things, 12% crit rate is not that much if you want crits, though to be fair... If you're running Jean for Shred, it's not that much of an issue. But I specifically run Jean. I run her with Noblesse. I run her actually on Mono Animo teams. Because I have her C4 just from losing a bunch of 50-50s. That's one that shreds Animo Resistance for enemies in the field. That might not be something you can really... You might want to pull off right now. But I use this for healing on a really silly team of Furina... Farazan, Jean, and Wanderer. Okay. That works. But I... Depends on the team you're trying to run. Because the only times I really run Mona anymore would be on a... Morgana team. And when you do that there... Generally speaking, I run Mona with Tenacity. I put Noblesse on Diona. The big thing is that multiple Noblesses are not compatible... So if you have a character who can keep up good uptime on Tenacity, it's oftentimes better to run Tenacity. But of course, it's a matter of what you have the ability to do right now. And this would be nice, too. Yeah, one day, one day I'll probably get Gene C6. And that would make that Wander team pretty ridiculous by giving it good survivability, too. Another Wander team I run, as a joke mostly, is Wanderer, Yale, and Bennett, and... Farazan. Big thing is that it can actually be good with fall damage on local legends, because it can... Yelon and Wanderer together spamming normals. If you spam Wanderer normals, which triggers Yelon's coordinated, can lift enemies really high for crazy fall damage. Which can be a viable strategy on certain local legends, actually. It's a very silly way to do it, but when it works, it works. What I'm wondering is... I need to put together a Fremen A team now. See, Jing. As Navia could work, but it, the draw is not her main gimmick. Maybe? Let's get rid of this real quick, but it's all about card draw then. Because Paris Timer. That lass has not yet gained Paris Timer. Pressurized flow, subnautical hunter mode. Three cards, normal attack or elemental skill. Bottom of your deck, draw the same number of cards. I don't know if Navia or Fremnate would be better here. He's got some shielding on him automatically. Alone under the cold light of stars. Pierce timer. Pressure level. At least four additional physical damage. So he can just keep on drawing cards. I imagine that the goal is to basically spam normals with him. Hmm. Force Regalia might be a good option. Maybe. It's just once per round. And played. Two elemental dice. Hmm. It's a complicated one, but it's... The goal is to build it around Fremenet. The question is who would be good to boost him, because I imagine the best way might just be keeping him on field. Letting everyone else just sort of get around him. I... Gamblers is always a good option. But I think I'm going to have to test things out to see how well he can survive. This is good. 
good to maybe putting one down, ones down that can help us draw cards. Huh. It's all about that card draw. And of course, these will help. And maybe in case I can't get that, the smoked chicken too. Legitimately, there's a lot to think about here. And I guess if things really, if worse came to worse, I could just look up somebody else's solution to this, but it's not nearly as fun. Hmm. So then, Kujura maybe. This can only be so useful. She is going to be trying to not switch out. This down. Remine in there. That means, of course, put this down. We can resolve. Draw one card twice per round, so that's just boosting the card draw. To be fair, Navi could use that too. The issue is, is that Navi's card draw relies on her procking crystallize. And that requires precious time to really set up. That might be good. And I think... Honestly... That might be useful. It's only once per round. In addition to that, I think... Oh, it's Marchasse. It's Marchasse all the way. So it also helps you... Do card draw. We're gonna try this. But of course, we could also put in a bit more and keep that there. I think. Switching things out, it's not going to be useful. Probably not, almost certainly not. So, this for a boost. This. Should hopefully help us. This may be enough, but I'm not sure. So this is the active deck, and it's just a matter of putting from an A in. It... I would say... I'm not sure what point you're at progress-wise, but you would probably do well to look into... the... Sanctifying Elixir, the new artifact forging juice. It's definitely something to think about. Where'd that even come from, anyway? Artifact printer. What is that thing called again? Artifact printer is the... How did I even get that thing? Give it to me for free somewhere, but the... Artifact transmuter. Get that from... The wiki does not say anything about that at the moment. The Phantom wiki seems to have been underprivileged in search results for some reason. Oh, you get it from the book. You get it from the guide. I... Milani is interesting. She's fun to play as. Oh, transmuter's available, right? I should do that. Milani is fun to play as. But she's not perfect. And a lot of her pull value comes from just... How good she is for not one exploration. She's a newbie at side grade and beta. They were going to hard power creep newbie at and then decided against. Originally, her damage was truly ridiculous. It's still really good, but it's not crazy crazy anymore. But it's just her surfing's amazing in not long, but only so good outside. And. Once this year's patch cycle is over, it's going to, by necessity, become at least a little less useful. So at I, I'm in a relatively lucky position in terms of my Primo savings. So I try to roll for everyone, in part because it just makes streams more fun getting to show off new characters too. But it is not necessarily what you want to do right now. It might not link up with your ideal situation and... I? Hmm. 
Immediately use pressurized foil once. Much to think about there. But I might actually not like to put that down at the moment. We'll see. I don't know. Hmm, every one card you draw, next time you attack. That, hmm, what do I have? In terms of artifacts, we can just try to get one more cryo. That's fine. The question here really just is, can I again Paris timer? Pressurized flow, at least two, cancel the effect. Is it again for big damage? Only two per. Some sort of healing. Some sort of survivability effect would be good. The big thing is, I was wondering whether they would use two or three skills per round. Main thing is, we've got three rounds for this. If they use three, then you have two because of the candle eye stuff here at Withering Corrosion. It is cool how they try to implement that as a mechanic in here. Well, put that on you. Maybe we could put this down? Probably not. Well, the big thing is... Hmm. Actually use this right now. Sure. So that, that's twice per round. That's good damage, but... Definitely want to switch out, especially since it's not going to get triggered at the moment. have to get a switch back in, but... Oh, never mind. No, that will just be physical. Maybe I needed more healing. Maybe I needed more healing. Oh, but I, I'm not going to get a switch out. It's right, because I can use that. Okay. Uh, in that case... I think the best option would actually be putting the bell on him. Trying to make sure I get bell first time around. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I just roll for everyone, but in terms of pull value, not to say too much about weeks, but Zhilinen is going to be an arguable at least side grade, maybe power creep for Kaza. So it depends on what you need in terms of shred. It's a different kind of shred, too. The big thing is that it would be compatible with Viridescent Venerer. You could use her in concert with a character like Jean. And she would be, though technically you do already have Kachina for free. Some good options there. It's gonna be a sort of a slightly better Kachina in terms of how she works exploration-wise. But... It's got to be Bell. That's for sure. Just for the additional durability we get from that. Hmm. And I don't think we actually want to deal additional damage in the first round anyway. So we are going to try to make sure that Fremne can just sit back on field and obliterate them. Kujurai could be good. Could be good. But else, also, Tenchikaku is not good here. Tenchikaku is actually not good here. Should actually switch Tenchikaku out. Since we have three rounds, well, even if we, even with three rounds, if we only had two, it would be a waste. So it's only in a long battle. In two rounds, it'd just break even. Because it's two dice cost, and in a three round battle, if we played it first round, you would get two dice back, assuming you met the condition over the course of the match. Tenchukaku does not belong in this deck. Kujurai could. Let's actually take out Tenchukaku and maybe put in Forest Regalia. Neither does this one, honestly. Especially because of the card draw effects. Forest Regalia, maybe. This is... legitimately rather tough. It... That could be good. Maybe... I don't think so. Now this, this, is to focus on card draw. But what do I want to switch out in favor of Weeping Willow then? Probably you. Gamblers. All right, let's go for it. Let's try this 
nightmare challenge yet again. That is an okay enough starting setup. I am fine with this. At least try this. I think we've got a deck that should work. At this point, it's just a matter of good luck in terms of rolls. Hmm. So, next is a normal attack during this round. Huh. Well. Interesting. Equip that on you. Put... Oh, but we can't use... No, we could use that, actually. Use that. That will unleash that, unfortunately. Hmm. Play this to create, which is nice. There we are. Thank you. I almost certainly want that skill is the thing. Switch to the clear water, we will... Way to take that. Cool. Mm hmm. Nose timer. Put that down. That will be the end of my round there. Oh, but. Huh. It's only physical, but still. Waking resolve should hopefully help, but. That is rather useful. Hmm. I think it's gotta be for MA. I think we put the deck together rather well here. And also, this one just generally isn't meant to be all that hard, but still. Hopefully, unleash ourselves. Put strike and that. Oh, and there we are, nine damage. Just put this down right now. Sure. Cool! Very good. That is nice damage and a nice bit of shielding. Wait, what? Huh? After you draw three cards. It... We need Bell. It's at the start of this match. Oh, oh, sorry. I didn't... I can't see artifacts on your characters. I can take a look at your... Character summary, real quick. Your preview. So... The big thing with Mona is that... You want her to have... A good amount of energy recharge. My Mona has... Let me just check. My Mona has... 277. I usually run her with Fab Codex. I built her around ER. So that she can reliably get her burst back, because she's just a burst bot. Sometimes I run her with... Thrilling Tales. But that's the main thing, is that if you want to run her on a Quicksaw team like Morgana, or just... Not to have to battery her, and, and then maybe even use her to battery other people... She needs a pretty heroic amount of energy recharge. But that, with a sans for it, some substats, a weapon, and her innate ascension stat, it generally isn't all that bad. Generally. Hmm. One thing is... I feel like the best thing to do would be to find a way to equip Fremenate as quickly as possible, and then kind of keep him off field. Have someone to basically take the hits while Fremenet gets kitted out. So he can unleash himself as quickly as possible. It... I would like to say something other than... You might have to stay in the mines. But you probably have to stay in the mines. Cruise your eyes, smoke chicken. That's a little unfortunate. Oh well. This should be somewhat helpful for him, but that means a missing. A wasted die. Oh well. 
And we are going to let this play out. HP. But the big thing is, is I would say that Tenacity is generally a good option on her. Oh, but I didn't even think about it. But if you have a good way to proc Frozen, you could prevent them from moving and prevent that from going down. Or you could just spam card draw and that would work too. Hmm. Well, all right. You will make this happen. Go ahead. Let's provide shield points. You're doing okay. Hydro. What I will say is... Crit rate, I mean... Goblets are almost always going to be... I mean, main stats are almost always going to be more important than substats. It, of course, depends on the situation, but generally it does. Okay, let's go for a nice big hit. Thank you. So you're going to hit me. That's a bit more much to say. Thank you. Mm, treasure Seekling is interesting. I... That's how I want to do it. We can actually get the burst off. Okay. It's right there. We can actually use his burst as well, which is nice. And we'll just start hitting. Hmm. Yeah. Got and there we are. Go ahead, have fun here. Main thing is, we figure out a good way to take out that Aramite before he uses a big attack. Yeah, Dia, that is one of her, you know, as unfortunate as to say, that is one of her few redeeming qualities. The fact that she does not need much in the way of support in that regard. Hmm. Well then. What? Well, bet. Bet. Just see. Five damage. We can draw some stuff with a Paris timer. Thank you. Let me draw some back. Got a good amount of that. Switch to the Sunfrost. I just barely do not kill. That really pains me. Hmm. Okay. That's gonna be candlelight, candle of life, and the end of all this. First time, or is it that much? Two additional physical damage. Well, after it's finalized, or. Let me just see about that, then. How much is that going to deal for me? Never mind. Okay. Uh, we were close. I feel like it's got to be a question of luck, maybe. But as well as that, maybe I could. I'm going to try this one more time, but I think it might honestly be a matter of Putting down Mona or some other cheap method of elemental app. It's hard to tell. You know, there's good synergy with Fremen A, but still. That should stay in pocket. Should honestly stay in pocket. Uh. Okay. Going to try our best one more time. Get that Paris timer going, and oh my goodness. That could have not been more farcical if I had tried. Well, actually. Hmm. Put that down, put this down. Okay. Gonna use one of these. That's a switch out. Thank you. Hmm. Use that just to leave the place. Then hopefully I can use the bell with him or something, but still. If 
Focusing on card draw other than individual attacks might be good, but still. <sighs> Moment of waking resolve. It's just to make sure he doesn't get one tapped. He's legitimately kind of an endeavor. That would kill. So I guess we can let Charlotte take a hit. Depending on how the math works out. Yukuya. That will switch, but... There are certainly limitations to my current approach. Hmm. Guess we'll use that. Decent should help power something up. And... Hmm. This should be good pretty much no matter what, and... Moment Awaken and Resolve. Thank you. Interesting enough. I... Depending on how I manage this... That might be good. Hmm... That would be good, but it's a matter of making sure that I kill one of them without... I want to get a quick kill at the start of the next round. But... Good VV. Defense percent. Honestly, that sounds like the kind of thing you might want to keep as an off piece. Because there are not currently any animo characters who scale with defense in any way shape or form which is not great <laughs> hmm. huh. purse is definitely nice to put down but huh. get a single hit off it's a kill and we can't afford to let a kill sit but We are in trouble. Oh, well, we can use that. But it's one of us unaligned out. Well, we can use that for more or less the same effect by just hitting you. But... I honestly... Well, we can use that for the switch, maybe. But it's his round. And, oh, hmm. Who am I willing to see take a hit? That's what's so hard about all this. That is going to kill. Level zero. That's a good piece. But honest to goodness, I feel like that'd be the kind of thing you might want to put on someone like Albedo if you ever get Albedo. It would legitimately be a good Albedo piece. Okay, well, it's painful. Main thing is, I'll be able to slam that guy easily. Just one punch should do it. Huh. Well, honestly, we should have kept Navia. In the party, just so she could clean up after Fremini died, so that I'd be able to focus on full offense. Hmm. Well, well, that's life. Especially since Rathazli being there is less than pleasant. Yeah. It. It's gotta hurt. Mm. That... Really gotta figure out this team. I feel like freeze might be a good way to do it if it's about preventing movement. But... Yeah, especially with goblets, but also with sands and circlets. It's always important to have an eye for 
how pieces could do double duty, so to speak. It... Whenever you do anything like that, you always just gotta make sure you're fine with whatever happens. Though, to be fair, Mavuik is in... Three more versions. Or at the very least... The devs are explicitly said that the Archon Quest is ending in 5.3. So will be some time. I can't imagine that Movlika could come out before the end of the Archon Quest. I can imagine she might come back come out after. So maybe even 3.4. But I will be a monkey's uncle if she comes out in 5.3. Hmm. So freezing could work. And Xing Chao definitely sit down pretty easily. Honestly, real chance. I should just be using Ayaka. The Ayaka team that. Oh, okay. Additionally, Ganyu is good in here, too, because of the spread damage. Yeah, it. Freeze should be good here. We're not really getting engaged with the gimmick, and that's okay. We are just going to get Xing Chao stuff going as quickly as possible. Alright. Yeah. That would actually be pretty good for Kachina. As an off piece. The thing about Kachina is that she wants. And Kachina already kind of power creeps Kazuha because of how good the new Not One support artifact is for Not One characters. But. Kachina wants. Kachina wants a defense. All of her relevant damage scales off the defense. Notably, her. Her buffs do not. The only thing the defense contributes to is her personal damage. So you'd probably actually prefer an elemental energy recharge. Because the big thing is... She would be okay with it if you can reach her ER threshold. Especially if you don't really care about her ER. Because the big thing is... Her top's range increases during burst. So you can use that... To make the buff apply more easily. But if you don't need all that range, such as if you are in a fight with just a solo boss, you could easily make do with just your E skill. And no need for ER. Kachina is really just a bot for the new artifact set, with a little exception. Hmm. That's the action set of a combat action. I might not want that. Hmm. Well. Help with some application, maybe. Maybe. Depends. Oh, well. Never mind. That's why that was stupid. Let's try that again. She... She would appreciate it. But the only stat you really need to build for Kachina is... Maybe. Maybe energy recharge. And even then, you don't really need it all that much. You know, crit rate and crit damage would increase her personal damage. But her personal damage is not significant enough. That you should be losing sleep over it. That was an absolutely terrible starter roll. Okay. Come on. Why that actually very, very good. 
We'll take this. One less elemental die once per round. Take that, that will be good for us, and then we can just do a couple of hits to proc. Xing Chao's burst next round. And then freezes will more or less keep them sedated, I suppose. All right. As long as we can prevent movement, we can take as long as we like. Mm -hmm. Keep some hydro in. Decent crowd results are good. But it's normals that we really need. Hmm. That could be useful. Question is whether it'll make a difference this round or not. Because I'm not sure about that. Presuming Xing Zhao is going to die this round. Because he almost certainly will. Hmm. Three dice. Hmm. Yeah, we may as well put Blizzard on her. It might help next round, even if it won't make a difference in this one. Okay. There we are. Go ahead, kill me. And I will... Go for a hit. With Ayaka. Okay. Fusion hmm. is gone, but that might actually be good for the purpose of getting a switch back. Hmm. Yeah. It could work. It's definitely an option. Hmm. Actually, I probably want to stay in. Because, mm -mm. stay in and then freeze. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Crit rate especially is pretty good. Right now I'm eating dried broad beans. A snack from the local Asian market. It says mame. It's just beans. Alright, there we go. That's one that did not proc. Okay. Hmm. You can take that hit. Okay. Not having the meat rolls definitely hurts me a little. Hmm. But we can boost our damage a little this way. Hmm. Well, okay then. Huh. Maybe it is the Fremen Aether, honestly. This did not quite do what I would have wanted it to. Hmm. Well, alright. Because it's... I can't do much at this point and that guy is going to just... Why me next round? I feel like some sort of combination of Fremenet and Navi has got to be it. Oh, nice. Oh, so do you, do you have that on Mona right now as a sort of stopgap? In the end, you don't need truly optimized artifacts except for things like Abyss Theater and maybe some local legends. Oh, okay. Yeah, the main things I would focus on for Mona would be elemental re energy recharge and crit rate if you're trying to proc Fav Codex. Hmm. It's got to be hyper offense. Hmm. 
Well. Some kind of weird Navia Fremen A team. It's got to be it. But what that is going to look like, only God knows. Hmm. It's all about card draw. Navia really is the queen of card draw. And that is just going to draw true crystal shrapnel. I think that's honest. It's honestly meant to be more about Navia than about Fremenay then. Hmm. No. Maybe what you might be meant to do is use crystallizes with Navia to help speed up the card draw even more and then just maybe spam Paris Time or stuff. In that case, this team would be doing a lot of switching. Hmm. In that case, I'd probably be better off with... I'm probably not Weeping Will either. Given that, we'll be drawing a lot of cards and keeping them in the deck. Legitimately a complicated one. We're going to be doing a lot of switching. Oh, nice! And do you think you'll be saving that for Mavuika? I... Definitely am excited to see what her movement ability is like. Some people suggested that it might be sort of a slightly worse version of every tribe's one. You know, all six combined, since there is no Pyro tribe, apparently. Well, I guess the Kukasaur kind of deals du does double duty. Excuse me, as Animo and Pyro Dragon. It flies, but it's red. And the Kukasaur we... The only Kukasaur we see in this version, because... The normal Kukasaurs aren't enemies yet, we just have the boss version. Mainly deal pyro damage, no animo, some physical too. Hmm. I wonder about this. This might work. Maybe. Try this again now that we have Navi. Oh, right. Put something else in, because we took some stuff out, and then... I feel like other Catherine or... Honestly, I feel like Catherine would be good here. Because enabling a quick switch would allow us to capitalize on Paris Timer stuff. So I guess it'd basically be Paris Timer, Navia, Crystal Shot Spamming. Um, how good is Fajal? It's honestly kind of crazy that they announced their fake collab about a year in advance. Because I really feel like I should get in the game just enough to play it. But also have a year. And I wonder if that means that they basically say, oh, you would need a year to get ready if you started now. I don't imagine that's the case, but still. Okay, well, let's try this again. With whatever this team is. Hmm. Oh, wow. Hmm. I wonder. Hmm. Decent option. Oh, but. Unless you're switching back. Huh. The value of the fan is actually probably low in terms of dice. It's another number of rounds we're going to get here. <laughs> well, the more cryo we spread around, the better. I read an interesting essay. I think on the Gasha Gaming sub. Some time ago, basically about how different which just say could be good here, maybe. Maybe. We'll go for it. Alright. Cool, take a hit. But I think, honestly, I... Maybe I'll stand. Maybe. Hmm. 
Yeah, just go ahead. We'll put this down then and wait. Okay. But how Star Rail and Genshin have sort of fundamental game design philosophies because of the fundamentally different ways in which their systems work in that it's maybe not easy, but there are a lot of levers that can be pulled. Stuff like break mechanics, just ways to make characters better than each other without purely making their numbers bigger. And the path paths also help with that too. But and so much of Genshin depends on execution and mechanical skill because it's real time with Ibram dodges. There's a bit less they can do to sort of make sure things go a certain way if you catch my drift. There's less to manipulate. Which is why the shape of power creep in the game is frankly weird. And why they have to resort to unique mechanics like Night Soul to try to get the same kind of environment, but people don't like it. Hmm. Well. Oh, wow. That's death. It's a death right now. Fair enough. And, you know, maybe it means a very dead for m a but... It's the price you pay sometimes. Mm. If I had put Bell on him, that would have worked. I... People are saying, though it's a very, very obvious choice that is winning nobody any prizes, people expect either Bennett or Zhongling to get power crept. Maybe even both. People are thinking about the idea of Shibalanke power creeping Bennett and then Mavuika power creeping Zhongling, though that was all just basically leaker fanfiction, most likely. There isn't really much of a way to know of these kinds of things. But Okay, this is actually working quite well for me. Wait, did we? We didn't draw much. Huh. Well, okay. In that case, gonna have to adjust some things, but... Big question is, if we get seven in total, that should be enough for a burst, depending on how we do things. What's the difference between a kill and a... Not a kill. Gonna have to do a lot of... Consuming guards and tuning. That is fine. Let's just see what we get now. Okay. We'll use the burst. And pray. And everything is going into this one burst. Alright. And here we are. This is actually doing quite well. Hopefully. He comes in. That's a card right there. Oh, nice. I would... I'd say that's a good idea. But as I was saying... The jury's kind of out right now on whether Shibalanke is even going to be playable. Well, people don't really know. In that case, and some people suggested... You know, again, probably just making stuff up. That sort of idea behind. How much damage would this deal? That's six. That's good. Hmm. It's just how many hits can I deal with what I've got? We've got one die right there. That's actually real good. I think this is how we're going to have to do this then. Couple more hits. Maybe. It's what people are guessing under the impression that, okay, Bennett's been good for a long time as a powerful support. And one of the few four stars who is still very relevant in the metagame. And that get 
that said, the other thing, something that arguably goes counter to that is that Fiorina did not hard power creep Xing Chao and Ye Wan. <laughs> that she honestly wasn't even all that amazing for Hot Drop anyway. Had an entirely different niche. So that's the third competing theory, sort of. Okay, Power Arc on Power Creeps Bennett, Power Arc, Power Arc on Power Creeps Zhongling, and then Pyro Archon is all about Night Soul and Night Soul Burst somehow. And something that maybe reinforces that is that Melody and Keenage currently do not really have a really good Pyro use Pyro user for their teams, because both of them want Pyro reactions. Milani is the game's only viable forward vape character. Unless I guess you have a whale to your DPS Barbara and you're silly like that. And that worked actually pretty comfortably too. And then Keen H wants burning or virgin, but burning is better than better for him because one, I'm pretty sure that Toma, who was the only real good virgin unit, unless you're going really copium with Dia. I don't think his fire attacks can actually reach enemies all that reliably to destroy Burgeon Bloom Cores, make Bloom Cores Burgeon on a team with Keenich, because Keenich stays away from the enemy when he's doing his grapple spin attacks, which are really, really cool. I'm excited for him. I have a level 90 R5 Earthshaker, which is the grapple claim we're ready for him. But, as I was saying, he he's much better with Burning than Burgeon. And of course, you can make that work really well with Emily. But you'd want to run either Dia, who works well enough, works better with Keenich than Milani, because her pyro application rate is never an issue in that team, because you're maintaining it with your Dendro. And the burning is only there to sustain Keenich's special Night Soul effect, which just gives him more points and therefore more big blasts when burning keeps ticking. But... The fact that Zhang Ling is still the best off-field pyro player in terms of rate, arguably, I think there's a good chance that Mavuika power creeps her in terms of application, and that she's sort of e-skill, fire, and forget, a bit like Raiden, and if you just want pyro application for other characters to use instead of pyro application with damage in and of itself, she might be just better than Zhang Ling in that department. And that kind of would be kind of a reverse theory in it, in that better application, worse damage, personal damage. But the gimmick of not one right now is very clearly not so. And a lot of people criticize it, and it is legitimate. That unlike how with stuff like Marsha Say or Golden Troop, which pretty much everyone could use, the entire point of Not One's artifacts and five point or or just you put them on not one not one characters and you can't do much else with them otherwise. You know, they don't really work unless that character has a Night Soul Blessing ability in their kit. So she might be a buffer that works with Night Soul somehow. Or maybe, and I think this, in the same way that Furina's whole deal is basically allowing anyone to use Marchasse by HP joining the team very reliably. There's a chance that Mavuika somehow makes Night Soul Burst work better with characters with fewer not one characters, which gives a sort of pseudo Night Soul's Blessings that they can use. Obsidian Codex or Cinder City Scroll? I don't know. But the other thing is just that Mavuika is probably coming out in 5.3 instead of 5.2. And point three versions have historically been versions in which new artifact sets are released. So there's a good chance that Mavuika herself does not use either Obsidian Codex or Scroll of Cinder City as her best artifact set. But again, we don't know. It's interesting. The fact that Mavuika is delayed by one version, ironically, you know, that one version, because it raises the possibility of her having a new artifact set for her, released in her version, which Raiden did not get, Nahida did not get, Furina did not get, they use the point of artifacts. Raiden likes Emblem, Furina likes Golden Troop, maybe I guess March Chasse. Nahida notably likes Deepwood or Gilded, mostly Deepwood, but if you run around, he'll probably Gilded. 
Does it can run her on field? Special on new Bloom. But that'll be fair then. You, I guess you get to use Flyer Paradise Lost. I don't know. Main thing is... Everyone's guesses about Mawika's kit are just guesses. That is it. People are trying to talk at Big Talk, but we don't know. <laughs> Defeater is a burst. Dorms? Dorms where? Is that a Fontaine? I know they mentioned dorms in a Fontaine quest. Or is this Fontaine? Wait, is this Fortress of Meripede or is it the Institute? If it's Meripede... The best way to do it is to select the quest destination icon on your map and it will tell you what map layer it's on. You have to find a nearby teleport waypoint and or use elevators, but it's at least more usable that way. Omni element, dice, and draw one card, activate after current action is completed. But... As I was saying, I think the best option would probably be, especially since it would be very hard for them to really power creep Bennett without just being better attack buff, which is a very boring way to make a character. It would probably be bad for the Inns longevity. Oh, oh. Well, if you're in the fortress, you look for the elevators on any level, then presumably you just go up enough times and make sure to activate the teleporters along the way. Mm -hmm. This is a burst. I... Okay, there's no way... No way I shouldn't just be using some kind of animal character here. <laughs> this is an animo spam deck for sure. <clears throat> but beyond that. <clears throat> and after the current action is completed. <clears throat> oh, okay. All right. Hmm. I think the best option would just be... I don't think I still have it, but a deck would just sucrose, basically. Let's see what happens. I... You might be able to tell, but I do like Rathesley as a character. I think it might have been a bit of a cop-out. I'm not sure if you saw it, but in the original trailer, they had... They presented him as kind of villainous. And to be fair, the entire point of his deal was more or less... You think he's a bad guy, but he's actually not. But... It's still... I like what they did with Arlequino in terms of making characters who were legitimately morally ambiguous morally ambiguous. Oh, but it's the wrong team. I'm stupid. Okay. Come on, come on. Oh, you can see their health change a little. Like he was putting on another motor. Oh, presumably because their HP buffs were gone? Hmm. Okay. All right. Well. No, no, I forgot to change the deck. It just sent me straight through. I'm so stupid. Come on. Sag. Well. Okay. What you gotta do is use crowd control to break the shield. Give me the silly animal only team. And it's right here. Okay. Thank you. 
<laughs> if we crowd control you relentlessly and ooh, right, right, that's good too. I think and I can use that to equip it next round as well. I bet. Mm -mm. Who's your on that? Well, actually, no, I can't equip that next round. This is the thing. Triggers an elemental reaction, deal plus one damage. Guess my question is... Putting that on you... How much would that... I don't think that actually boosted that in any meaningful way. Oh well. Thank you. Cool. Switched. Oh, well. Hmm. Maybe that was not such a good idea. Maybe I needed sucrose, presumably. Oh, okay. Oh, so you hadn't gotten inside yet? Oh, wow. Hmm. Had the wrong character. Hmm. I want to see if this will make any difference, having this on. We'll see what happens. Additional damage is always good. First round is all that matters here. See what happens. Otherwise, this might actually be better. Maybe. Okay. Put that on you and... Will this... That does not really make much of a difference. Okay. The previous character. And... You switch back. Oh, you're going to ram. Huh. I... Hmm. Just trying to figure out who I want to run with this, then. Hmm. Previous character. Hmm. I... Hmm. That might not actually be the best way to do things. This way to do things might actually be... Force a switch. Oh, there is another one. Hmm. This has got to be all about four switches, I imagine. It's just any time you got... Multiple characters with elements applied to them. It has to be question of triggering as many reactions as you can as quickly as you can just blast them down hmm. the thing is we don't want the switch until we have to have the switch hmm well two parametric transformers should help me out a bit but it's probably going to be another sucrose MVP situation. Alright. Thank you. And an elemental burst is also a good option. That's a kill. I... I hope never. That makes me deeply sad. I don't know, we'll see. Tainted waters change their shape. So, my turn continues, because we knocked someone out. Let's pyro on them, but... Main thing is, knocking out... Actually, we want to do this now. That will absorb... The pyro, which should help kill whichever one is left. Oh, you mean the dorms and the spinosaurs. Now I see. Okay. What are you going to next? Whatever. Hmm. Hey, this, this one should not be all that crazy. Go ahead. Four damage, whatever. Allow me to obliterate one of your ilk. That. Hmm. Three versus... Yeah, whenever we can, we gotta do the bonus damage. Hmm. So we got this. Hmm. 
Just boost the damage we deal. That might make the difference between life or death. We gotta risk it. But the damage there is good. Either way, we can get kill off. Now this is actually just fine. We don't even need the summon. It's Sucrose is literally just this good here. You don't need to do anything else. Just you spam Sucrose. It's ridiculous. Okay. Well, all right. Thank you. Literally undefeated. It's a kill that didn't even get to absorb an element. Fair enough. So. Let's chew all those challenges down. But it's... It's just... Whenever there's anything with elements, it's just... You just use... You just use... Sucrose. Better than pretty much any other animal character, too, because... He's got crowd control, the ability to scroll on basic attacks. It's so crazy. All I can think of is, when Hazo comes out, could they make him better? Would it even be meaningfully possible? I? This seems like a Navia one too. Honestly. Specifically because you can use Crystal Shrapnel to decrease the damage pretty well. Next time the effect occurs. The next time the effect occurs. Hmm. Hmm. It's one damage. I was trying to think of what the best way to rapidly inflict small amounts of damage would be. I feel like a deck based around spamming techniques. That seems seems to be the most obvious option. But again, the question is what such a deck would look like. Obviously, a Taya is a good option there. But I suppose maybe Xion Yun. Just characters who can spawn more techniques in as part of their basic abilities. Sean Yoon, Hydra Hiltral Rogue. Then maybe something like Charlotte to Freeze. The issue is, is that it, you can't just freeze it because the damage you deal. Damage at the end of the round, which could insta-wipe. It's a bit independent. Score technique, one contending fire. A random basic elemental die. Hmm. Kill for 2 HP. Plus one damage for two rounds, and I'll... Would that apply to techniques too? Hmm. I think with the techniques is how effective they are. I mean, how efficient they are in terms of dealing damage quickly. I... To deal little bits of damage quickly. Navia, Navia should maybe be there because of Crystal Shrapnel. Maybe. But challenges this time around are a lot more interesting, I'll say. Well, there is one that was just another use animo check, but those are refreshing. I don't mind them. Hmm. It's good to have this. Then Atea is technique, one less elemental die once per round, and that could be... That will pay dividends eventually in the end. But also... Maybe Dunyarzad? Dunyarzad is also... <sighs> it's got to be all about making these techniques work. Saurian Dining Buddies increase usages by one. Nice, but not least, get some good grub. The way to a swarm's heart is through the stomach, after all. It's interesting but that besides the cucusers we seek, there's a baby cucusor in one quest, too, in addition to the boss. <sighs> there. The only place you see the Electro and Gryosaur is on the Saurian Cracker cookies. 
But that is presumably confirmation that the ones we haven't seen are Electra and Cryo, because obvious, more or less obviously, Yansan is Electrovision, Hero Collective of Plenty. Plainly Electro Tribe, but there is, you know, there's debate over whether Flower Feather Clan is Pyro or Animo, and therefore whether Masters of the Nightwind is Animo Cryo. Or maybe even Pyro, but... I don't know if it's NPC dialogue or what, but somehow fan fan consensus is basically that <sighs> cryo and Nightwind is cryo and flower feather is animo, and nobody really has any doubt that collective appointee is electro. Mm -hmm. Techniques. Just want to make sure I don't have too much. It's a good one to have. Oh, because you're going into the prison now. Right? Storm Pinion. Could be useful. Good too. Could use this for... Maybe getting some crystals off and just try to burst it down as quickly as possible. Certainly an option. Right, right. Maripede is a cool area. I I was confused in what you were talking about because there are dorms there. But Rathesley is a cool character. Sigwin's fun too. Though as much as I like her, she doesn't feel like a 5-star. The other should have made her a 4-star, just made her stronger. You know, honestly, if I had the funds and they gave us, gave us enough Prima Gems, I would be fine with every single character being a 5-star. If they just gave us enough Prima Gems, a difference didn't really matter. There are some people saying that there will just be more 5 stars in the future and fewer 4 stars, which... Given that they've actually been a bit more generous with Prima Gems... You know, if you're diligent, you get a good amount from Theater and from... Abyss. It's not horrible, horrible. But... Hmm... Oh, but this... Only skills. This is about technique spam. I'm not sure that would actually work all that well. Hmm. I think changing shifts and... Leave it to me would actually be good options. Maybe even toss-up. Maybe even this one. This one too, actually. And we inevitably die. So it's all about surviving. I cannot imagine that this will go without me having to sack somebody. Okay. We are gonna go for it. I'm gonna go for one try, but... For the next one, I do actually need to take a quick bathroom break. If I mess this up, I'm gonna take, another, take a quick bathroom break before my next try. Water is nice, but... Hmm. So in that case... Take damage for every, oh for each point of damage. Point of damage. Oh, okay, so this just deals as much damage as possible, presumably, but techniques could help. But I feel like techniques have got to be part of it just because techniques were introduced literally in this version. Bump. Hmm. Who knows? Oh, hmm. I can't steal anything. It actually is about damage. Well. I... It's interesting. Hmm. Aww. You know, all I can think is just... What you gotta do is find out a way to just... Let Navia obliterate them and maybe use Crystal Shrapnel just as a way to... No, no, no. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking. Stonehide is annoying. That was an annoying starting hand. Well, alright. 
Put that down. Put that down. Give me a... Ooh, nice. It's actually pretty decent. Give me that. And... Get this started. Okay. Convenient. This is usage is by one. And we're just going to keep going with this. Okay. Come on. Mm. How many more? That's decent enough. Okay. Just four heal for two HP. And there we have it. Hopefully we'll be able to do a bit of sacking next round and... Honestly, I think we can just kill this guy. <laughs> oh, but... One out of six. Oh, so the idea is to survive without... Now that's interesting. Survive without... Huh. I... I'm deeply curious as to how this is really meant to be done then. Hmm. I suppose we can try to keep going, but... It's all piercing damage. I really wonder what. Mm -hmm. About the damage done, but also about healing. It... It's rather strange. The end of round three. That's what freaks me out. That's sad. Sad. Survive here. Five round one. Maybe kill. Kill it. And then just survive the following round. It's certainly an idea. Storm pinion. Fast action instead of combat action. Two stacks gain. Increases damage dealt by one. Light quads at dawn and... Word of wind and flower. Just hit. Okay, well. Hmm. Come on. Six to scar. Deals that much for a few more rounds. Hmm. That's interesting. Artful grapple is also just probably not that good. So the damage dealt is low. We can't steal anything here. But it's more about dealing damage than surviving, honestly. That's the thing. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. Well. Really makes you think. Really makes you think. Huh. Well. There's nothing I could do to make this cost less to switch. Well. Actually, yeah. Use that again. And then switch back out? Maybe. Hmm. Like Navia Skyladder means might actually be the move. And right over there. Damage comes back. And how do we want to do this? It's barely not enough. Hmm. Well, get that healing, but Star Wicker. Ha. Huh. The end of round three. So basically, maybe just trying to not kill this guy. Then... This is... Rather interesting. And go for that healing. And... Hmm. Alright, Starwicker on who? That will not do it. I feel like I'm going to have to sack Sack Jean Yoon. Which should hopefully work, but still. Hmm. The end of that round, but it doesn't say it'll deal damage to me before the end as well. It 
an interesting one. Okay. And I guess... I can try to just kill? The issue is the Adaptal Assistance Rod. I'm only using that, though. Hmm. Once you get attack, damage one, one animo damage. We're gonna heal you. Okay. Time to use a normal attack. And you know, why not? I'm just gonna blast you and hopefully this will allow me to survive. End of that round. Oh no! Okay. Well, it... Huh. If I had... Wait. The end of the round. Well, that's interesting. Well. Take a quick bathroom break. Hmm. Legitimately one heck of a... Heck of a challenge. Mm -mm. But it's... It's about dealing as much damage as possible, as quickly as possible. That's different from what I thought about. As many instances as possible, as quickly as possible. I'll be right back.
Okay, I'm back. And I'm wondering how I'm going to handle this. Given that Fesley might actually be good here. I'm wondering. It's all about accumulating as much damage as I can, as quickly as I can. Not as much damage as I can, as quickly as I can, but... Gotta deal 10 damage each round, ideally. I'm wondering... Honestly, maybe Fremenay would work well. Maybe. But... My Navi could work well, too. But... Really taking a lot out of me. Not expecting to have to think this hard. Mm hmm. But honestly, probably Fremen it with Bell or something, given that. <sighs> hmm. Hmm. Fremen it with Bell would mean. I guess we're gonna run a similar deck to what I ran before. Have to be all about just survivability, more or less. Sort of with a solo for MA, maybe. It's hard to say. Bell is good, but the goal is not really killing it as much as just damaging it surviving it. So I think that Marshall say pieces would be good options too, but maybe even gamblers. If the goal is to take it down more than anything else. Or to deal damage more than anything else. Ramp options might also be good. Things it can say, because the idea is basically get up to 10 damage and stop. And then probably use some healing food or something. Maybe. Maybe. I like the way these things are. Focusing on card drop would also help deal that damage more quickly. Hmm is much to think about. Huh. I think that... Next three rounds during the end phase. Hmm. Next two rounds. Hmm. I think... Maybe the Lotus would actually better. No, it's gotta be just the hash brown. Hmm. Well, here we are. We'll try it again. We'll pray and we'll suffer. Alright. Card game time. The question really is just how to deal with the boxer. What the way what way can I make sure the boxer stays on field? Hmm. That might be a should be a decent way to start, but hmm. damage I'm going to oh, take won't help me. As much damage as I can as quickly as I can. Of course, Navia would help that. Hmm. That's just one. Hmm. <sighs> Probably use that then. Okay. Thank you. Malte. That's a bit of Navia. Well, alright. Playing a food event card or not. Two geo damage or not. Thank you. Hmm. That's tough. It's very tough. Hmm. 
Only three. I feel like it has to be Navia then. Maybe. She's not going to be getting crystallizes like that. I just try to stay on field as much as I can until... I don't know. This is, again, rather painful. I don't know how I'm supposed to do this or how they want me to do this. Okay. Well, more damage. I'll be able to barely survive, and then that's... The end of Fremen A. Hmm. Yep. Okay. Well. Hmm. I'd had Bell. I could have gotten more accomplished, maybe. 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 Oops. I probably should have switched out to try to crystallize that. Probably. Hmm. I... There's no healing here, though. That's the thing. So shot one, draw two once per round. Okay. Fair enough. And there you have it. It's not horrible. Thanks. And I suppose... Will that save me? Maybe it will. Do that. Fair enough. That... Fixes that. Now it's all about surviving. Okay. Hmm. No damage taken. That's nice. So it really is all about just surviving. First couple of hits needed, which shouldn't be all that horrible, hopefully. Depending. Hmm. Honestly, good chance this really is just a matter of use Navia. Actually, Bell should help. But there's no way that this doesn't just boost me. Well, let's go for it anyway. I'm for a good damage crystal shot, and it will not kill me, thankfully. Or... Okay. Now we can... Deal a nice amount of damage to you. That will kill, but... That is... Normal. Okay. And no matter what happens, I'm living. Okay. Hmm. In that case, I think... Eliminate the rest by simply charging that up. Cool. So that wasn't all that bad. I think we've done it. Yeah. And... The interesting idea for a puzzle encounter, which means the only one left is the one with the preset deck and the preset dice, which means that if God hates me tonight, I can simply look up how to use this. The only cards we've got. It really is just a... In what way can you ensure... No way to force a quick switch. 
and I don't imagine what that's needed for other than maybe tuning. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. It's a decent enough chain reaction to make work, except... I feel like it has to be in some way. Hmm. Remarkably strange. Seeing a switch for damage into freeze, but... The only thing I can imagine is just that Kaya is not supposed to... Hit? Maybe... It's tough to think about, but non-zero chance the idea is use this to prevent being stunned, which would explain why it's here. This on him. Use a single hit. It'll bubble and fail. Prep this. <laughs> forces the Miss Bubble Lockdown, but that forces another switch. Additionally, Glacial Wallets is way too expensive to really be usable here, I would imagine. So it's really just a matter of... God forbid... Who do I start with? Hmm. The other thing is... This means that switching is free if you want it. If this is... The artifacts equipment means that switching is basically free if you want it the first time. And that you can eat that dice cost. Not too much trouble. Yep. Maybe I'm just too stuck on the idea of trapping of killing the bubble guy first thing. Main thing is just avoiding waste. Mm -mm. Bubble slam is good, but it's just about allocating damage as efficiently as possible. Mm. Only God knows. There's a non-zero chance that it's basically a massive farce and that you're basically supposed to just use Ayaka. Maybe. I don't know. It's tough. Yeah, yeah. Go in and try to profit from the freeze. Maybe. Switch to you and... Maybe just try switching? Issue is that only so much you can meaningfully accomplish there. But now that switch is forced. Hmm. You really never know. Really never know. Hmm. Half me really feels like it's gotta be an Ayaka hit to wipe out that one fighter with the burst. It would actually make a good deal of sense. And that's why it would be so tricky. But.
They make it so hard. Other thing is, of course, the starting energy. Hmm. Just think. The energy boost. It's gotta be. Just spamming the mist bubble slime? I honestly find that hard to imagine. Huh. So we could put that on there, and that is a single hit that inflicts a kill. But there was not much else going on in this neck of the woods. Hmm. Put this on there to switch that out. It was a more damaging technique. But... The ability to hit and kill... Huh. Legitimately very tough. That does not do it. Well then, how do you do it? Because what you could do in theory is... Damage. End of the round is defeated end phase. Does that happen before or after summons? It's always going to be... Always going to end on the fighter. I feel like the fighter has to die in order to make this work. There's a real chance that all you have to do is just... Stay with Ayaka, but... Questions the math. Hmm. Maybe the point of it this is the dice simply do not work out otherwise. But I feel like at least one thing here has to be a red herring then. Hmm. There's no way for her to get burst up that quickly is the thing. I suppose maybe the idea is you just spam Aika's abilities until you get her burst up and use the burst. But this does not give energy. As a result, value of it is limited. Hmm. I... Yeah, this just won't hack it. I wonder what I'm supposed to be doing here. Hmm. Could try this and just... It's one cryo damage at the end of everything. It's an interesting thought. Hmm. I feel like it's just a matter of finding a way to... You have to use the reaction at the end. Game of wits, yeah. Fortunately, I have none. But... And then. But if you stop the Anima Boxer, all it will do is force a quicker switch. Right? I think. Huh. Just think about this. We'll prep that as soon as we get the opportunity. 
does not stop me. Use this, he'll switch, and as soon as you come in, you're going to get stuck. But... And that did not meaningfully help me. All it did was make sure there was a turn in which he couldn't stay in. Making it even harder to actually get a hit in on him. It legitimately boggles the mind. What are you supposed to do here? Main thing is, the goal has to be get one of them to HP by the end of the match. Get one of them to 1 HP. One of them to two HP, one to three. And presumably the boxer to four. The question is how I can deal six damage to the boxer in a meaningful amount of time. And it, it would have to be using glacial waltz, I think. To start off with a. Hmm. So we don't get stuck. Switch over here. Attack. It's much damage, but two for presumably. It's expensive, but sustainable. Hmm. Use that to switch to the next guy. Thank you. And we cut. And maybe. But it can't be him. Take him to four. But. No. And now I know. This is what you do. Get these guys to one, two, three, four. And switch the blade out. Blade, or it's not the blade, it's the bubble. The bubble on you. Toss this down. And we switch. And we will actually score a kill. Then they'll be at one, two, three, and everything will work. And just to put a nice bow on everything, we switch to Ayaka the start of your turn. So we could screw that up if we wanted to. But we won't. And there we have it. And as soon as the damage procs, that is certain death to every single one of them. How nice. And there we are. One. Two. Three. And that's the game of wits. collect our rewards and do 25 minutes of not on world quests. Mm -mm. Thank you. Thank you. Let us buy a few skins and quit ourselves in this nasty, nasty place. Yimkasaurus. Koholosaurus. Same of the Sacred Flame. Matea. And. Tortaglia. Tortaglia Teo. Tortaglia Telepasta. Okay. We're chillin'. Mm -mm. Let's check real quick. 
Done this. Okay. I will go to not one. And the next world quest is over here. It's cool how the Trouble Chronicle story quests point you to the general locations of these quests without outright telling you. Put you in the general area and say, oh, look at that. That's an interesting location. Okay. Hello there. Talk to you, and you are. This is a big problem, man. How oh, a terrible luck. Still wouldn't this make for a pretty interesting story opener. T2, the tribe's old storyteller, spoke of what he had seen. On the day of that great earthquake, he saw the giant shadow pin plunge beneath the earth, and that was how all the calamities began. Oh, well, this person sure is spouting some scary stuff. Well, yes, you've sure gotten slow and didn't even notice them until they were right under your nose. The ones from a story I read recently made a real impression on me. Still, if you ask me, eavesdropping isn't usually considered a sign of virtue. Don't blame us, you were the one talking super loudly. Roar. Really? Well, that makes things awkward. And hey, come on, little fella, why are you backing these outlanders to suit side are you on? Rawr, rawr. All right, all right. So it's quite the strange little ensemble, two outlanders, and a special little tippet thesaurus. Social studies bookworm should love to see this. And who would that be? Maybe the Samira guy in the settlement? Wait, you can understand what Theodorx is saying? Understand Soren speak? Huh, you gotta be kidding me. No one can do that. What, what do you think they'd say anyway? Hello, my name is Theodorx. But I'm one of the children of Echoes, and we're always around to pet with sores. Can figure out what they're trying to communicate from their eyes, their expressions, and the humming noises they make. Anyway, in introductions are in order T2, that's my name. I'm Hans Palmon, and I'm the Traveler. Rar, and this is Theodorix, who I named after an Elden Ring dragon. So we introduce ourselves without a fight that makes us friends, and a word of advice from a friend this place is dangerous. Why don't you head over to the people the springs instead? And they've got it all over there hot springs, relaxing music, chicks and hunks in swimsuits, the works. All we've got here is a couple of huge stone pillars that even sounds boring. Shadow nail. Is that? Shadow pin. Maybe that... I'm not sure I'd call it giant. I was talking about the nail in the Night Kingdom. Oh no, those are big stone pillars, then what are you doing here? I'm caring for this particular pillar. It's been doing poorly of late, I'm afraid. The shadow pin spirit... Oh, shadow pin. Okay, so that's a shadow pin. The sphere was weakening, and the shadow it should have pinned in place down there soon silently slip away. You know what? That would make a good starting point for a story. Grr. I'm sorry I got a bit carried away thinking about stories there, telling tales as a storyteller is my responsibility here in the tribe. And after so many years, she just said storytelling, it's time for me to come up with some originals. And of course, something just had to go wrong with the shadow pin, just as I was a few days into my musing. Because why would it ever rain when it could pour? So with the rock fall down, he saw the giant shadow pin plunge beneath the earth. No fair warning, that bit's just speculation. Things might not have gotten that bad yet. But some accident has indeed happened with this pin, and one I can do nothing about. Is there really nothing you can do? I could make a record if it all was an eyewitness, that way I'd also have a new tale, I guess. Roar. Wait, you've just given up already? Actually, there's something else Palmon wanted to ask. Why is the stone called a shadow pin, and what's this shadow? Sigh, were I telling the children a story, I'd say the why up, that the why up hung the pins here to pin the shadow of the volcano lord in place. That which is sealed beneath them is in truth the abyss. So most tales in Nalan are, their embellished narratives held up as warnings, and all the rhetoric is a kind of metaphor. Wait, so you mean the abyss is actually sealed below here? That's right, and two out of three small shadow pins have recently floated up. Perhaps when the third floats too, all the evil beneath the earth will come surging up like a tide. You have three of these? Ooh, so there's still three more big stone pillars. Friend, don't mind me, but where does your interest in stone pillars come from, Leeway? Also, let me remind you, these the three lesser shadow pins aren't anywhere near this large. <laughs> Wait, if the story is true, can't we just solve the problem by pushing the two pillars that have floated up back down? So, what an amazing idea, if only we were the first to think of it. In fact, the lesser shadow pins have floated in the past, and according to the stories, that's, that's exactly how it was handled. Things are trickier this time, though. Where the abyss is involved, we can't stand idle. Perhaps I could lend a hand. 
That's right, we've solved a whole bunch of similar problems before. We're, ex we're experts now. Really, not that I'm down your ability. Is that much I can tell just from how you move, Traveler? I mean, to say, are you really willing to help? Since the abyss we're talking about, even I can't say for sure how dangerous things could get. You're so scary, I regret everything, and at last. Now my stomach suddenly hurts. Oh dear, I do so fear that danger is the only one for me, that one. Yeah, we know that's not right. We've done a whole bunch of things that aren't dangerous, too. Wait, Paimon's not sure what she's trying to say. Anyway, the point is that will help a lot. See, Theodorx agrees as well. Like a flame that appears in the darkness, so too will heroes rise up in times of great peril. Human possibility shines through in glory at moments such as this. You know what? This could make for a great story too. Indeed, Traveler, we've got some traits that even those storied heroes don't have. I'm looking forward to this, I must say. Let's go then, dear heroes. Let's go and check on our floating shadow pins. Beneath the crystal rock, go to the lesser shadow pin with Tito. It's right over there. Pick up a few of these Soren Claw succulents along the way, which is nice. Need them four keen each. And what is this? Oh, okay. Whatever they are, they explode and violently. Oh, we saw some of those in some of the obstacle courses beforehand. That's right. Honestly. It might be good to go and... Eh, getting specialties can wait for a bit later. Oh, so it's in a cave. Along the way, that would be some Saurians. Hmm. Let's just grab these crystal balls. Oh, there's another inscription. Interesting. Okay. Well, we could get a few succulents first in a beetle. Come on, get over here. We will. Let you all on fire, hopefully. And then. Come on, come on. Oh my goodness. Thanks. Thank you, and. Go like this. Thanks, and. One, two, three. Bite! And get that back. Bite again. One, two, three. Oh my goodness. Bite! And. And. Bite! Last one should do it. Or not. Huh. Either way, we can clean this chest. Whatever's in it. This is a chest. Yimono? Something about in the box. That was a little laggy. I really do wonder what's specifically up with that. Well, first we need to touch that. Do you see that, Traveler? That gold pattern in the air. If we'll get some engraving. Well, we'll see. Touch the golden inscription. This, Rift in the Mountains, Waterlogged Ruins. Oh, so this is a part we didn't see at the moment. Let's go down in there. No, presumably. This should be another cave, so we should be going along this pathway generally then, I think. This touch the golden inscription helped T to resolve the shadow pin issue and reinforce the seal placed upon the abyss. Shadows of the mountains. Touch that, but Okay, so we cannot progress through that tunnel until be fun if that dealt damage to us, but eh. Let me. That won't do anything yet, though. Presumably, once we touch the inscription, we can force it down with Tepa with sort of power. I would imagine. Wait for that to disappear first. Okay. Touch that, and moves into there. And what now? Reminds well, me of Mario Odyssey. <laughs> this is the first of the lesser shadow pins. The condensed salt for Gisin was sat scattered. The iridescent inscription on it has lost its constraining powers. Sigh, just as before, the abyss's influence has squeezed it out of the stone pillar. By iridescent inscription, do you mean that shiny golden stuff we saw just now? Now they mentioned it, I think we've seen before in the Atea quest. 
I know, and the Chonka? The one with <sighs> Upper Sanctum. You have a Na'o, and that's not something that ordinary travelers or adventurers often see. Ancient legends tell that before the idea of Na'o was even born, this land was ruled by the ancient dragons. The language by which they ruled it for guessing was these iridescent inscriptions. These days, none understand the meaning hidden in these lights, only the golden engravings scattered across Na'o remain to mark the trail of those ancient dragons. Wait, so you know how to work it, but not how it works. We cannot decipher the meaning of the inscriptions, but the ways we use focus are the same. So we do understand it on that level. Let me try to explain. So Liyue has those mysterious adeptal mechanisms, yes, and all humans she on mechanisms. Humans don't know the principles underlying their function. We can still make use of that. This music is too happy. It's more or less what I'm talking about, despite the imperfect analogy. Music's back. I guess it was because change of the camera angle required a position change. So that's how things are. Roo. What is it? Is your stomach upset? Purr. Come on, does this even look like a stomach problem? Theodorks, do you like those shiny golden things, Roar? They're not for eating, though. I'm on doubt, so they could be eaten anyway, but still watch what you chow down on, alright? Roo. So much to say that we'll need this shiny iridescent inscription to push the pin down, right? Correct, the inscription is an eggshell that has been shattered by the expanding abyss. We need to find the broken shards and fix, fix the shell, only then can the abyss within be sealed away. Hmm. Oh, that's a better analogy than the last. Agreed? That was super easy to understand. All right, then let's begin. And if you're ready, traveler, please touch the inscription beneath the pin. We've got to collect as much of the inscription's power scattered as it is around the stone pillar as we can. Of course, the abyss will resist, so please be careful. Repair the inscription. So, wrong traveler, just touch the ear dust inscription beneath the lesser shadow pin if you want to start gathering the inscription's power. Be sure to stay safe, though. And repair. Inscription restoration progress. Repair salt police and nail breaking the gravestone pillar. Power the inscription inscription. That's written solid. Spirits is something like that. The spikes. Power inscription is also hidden within. Okay. Well, I bet. Let me just see real quick. Oh, so it's only tap up the sores. Okay. So a Kachina will make it work. That's nice. How are the abyss has grown? Have to get the in your inscription fits. It starts to have an effect. Be careful. Oh. Okay. So we're traveling through here, and it is still consuming night soul or interesting crystal beetle. Is it catching up somehow with some of this, or? Oh, okay, so we have to do it before it catches up with us. Now I see. And we're slowly pushing. Want to avoid that big explosion, presumably. Just have to make sure we use our time correctly. Oh, and that exploded that big time. So that's how that works. That's fun. And we'll get the remainder. And is that it? It's when it turns green. Now that's going down. Oh, Rift Town. Zeke, watch out. Enemies incoming. Looks like you'll take two of them, too. Okay. Alright. One, two, three. Move in. And bite. One, two, three. Bite. And. Oh, my goodness. You're actually quite strong. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Oh, okay. Huh. I. Try this out again. And I was not expecting this level of brutality. Okay. One, two, three. Miss, I suppose. And, but, well, alright. If it works, it works. Should be it. And it should drill back down. Cool, look at Chino puzzle there. Okay. Can't believe that worked. That was truly a scene out from out of story and song. The cacophony fell silent and the pin returned to its original state, then its giant form crashed down to the ground. Who would have think that someone could really accomplish this? This isn't a dream, is it? You're all real, aren't you? Not figments of my imagination. Wake up, wake up, you've got to fix this yourself. Hey, there's no need to be so mean. But anyway, didn't Paimon tell you? The travel was super strong and raw. Hey, you think so, don't you, Theodorix? You weren't affected by the abyss, were you, traveler? Relax, it's just the abyss. I'll rank her now. You've got our strongest warriors, must remain vigilant, and then summon the face of the abyss or no ordinary person traveler. Ah, oh, who knows, the story spin from this material might even surpass those by Sanhaj. Er, that sure sounds impressive, but who's Sanhaj? Ah, for those who tell stories in their tribe, Sanhaj and the Masters of the Nightwind is worthy of reverence indeed. 
As time is short, I'll tell you more about Sun Hodge when we've got more time. All right, then, let's head for the next floating shadow pit. I want to fix this issue and start riding by nightfall. Oh, let's go, let's go, roar. Oh, but... Sun Hodge... Comporte... Comporte is one of the guys mentioned in... Debate, I mean, talking stick or Presumably he's not still alive, I would imagine. I think down here we cannot get on top of that. Okay. A bit more for guessing would help. That is true. The rest of that. We've successfully mined our way through then. Okay, and oh that Theodorix is right there, but my question is, I didn't check this from the other side. I'm wondering whether I would have been able to get through then. So did you dig this up, or what? Let's see what a special interaction is. So is it just... Oh, okay, so... He goes away, but... He's just alerting us of its presence, so presumably we could have maybe gotten here, but... There wouldn't be anything, because you had to dig the chest up. And you'll only do that after you make a pseudo amount of quest progress. Oh, and is that... It's falling down to make this more accessible. Thank you for making the path... ...rather apparent. Oh, but no, that's just a flaming flower. So one is terrain, the other is not. Okay. Get a couple of succulents. I Oh, so then when that gets killed, it doesn't drop anything, just it's full gas and Okay. Yep. Hmm. I think then could move on. I honestly feel like taking out the dudes along the way first. Is that over there too? Hmm. Much to think about. Question of how much I'll get done here and now and why. Hi, hi. I did not mean to do it like that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, these flaming flowers just run. Oh, hello there. Bye. Goodness. One, two, three. Bye. And. Simple enough. Okay. That'll do it. And. What is down there? Okay. One of those Moro rocks. Thanks. And... Interesting. Clearly... Knocking some of these away. Does us some good. A little beetle and a chest. Okay, cool. That's what was right there. That's just where that encounter was, but... Keep on moving. Find a little something more before I hop off, maybe. Maybe. Hmm. Big shadow pin down there. I wonder if mending that one shattered night jet I have might have anything to do with that. Presumably we have to drop it down to break through. To get into whatever's clearly underneath there. Probably. Presumably. Okay. And also, she can climb this liquid fugus in a way that others are at least less able to. So, we'll activate that. Ooh, lag. Not good. Come on. Thanks, and. Thank you. Two, three. Right, and. That's good. Okay. Thank you. Hmm. An Oculus, another yep. little challenge, some enemies around here who I think I'll take out. Yep. For the sake of it. Mm. Hello there. Hello. Just like that, and... Just like this. Okay, and... Two, three. I'm surprised that didn't work. Oh, whatever. Thanks. Two, three. Four. Bite. Um, and that's it. Cool. Am I not catching that? It's your victory. Oh, and it's 
mostly succulents. That's a really funny thing to have in a chest. It's almost like all those synthetics from that one spot. It, we're getting silly with it, but it is actually really cool just from a perspective of getting more specialties just by exploring. Come on. And we didn't really need that, but blow you up. Come on. Aim a bit more precisely. Come on. There we go. Okay. Didn't do much, but we can get it's a couple more tiny bits of material. Let me just think then. Hmm. How do I want to manage this? Go up top to grab this one Oculus. But again, I think it won't be until next patch that I really complete exploring. The now one added here because they're not adding new areas next patch. Hmm. One of those breakable Mora rocks. Or this over there, but we don't have a Yunkus, or we don't have Keenage, so. The... Okay, that worked. Come on. You down there, and do we have to use a Yunkus or just break it with? Zooming some of those barrels? Yeah, just the barrels. Hello, hello. Get over here. And oh, he's not coming over. That's a surprise to me, actually. Come on. Two, three. Bye. Cool. Main thing is, if I. I thought I'd be able to get you by the barrel. Oh well. Oh, come on. Just stay out of the way. Yeah, I thought I'd be able to get a second G hit in. That was not the case. Come on. Two. Three. And. It's my only instance of range, anything. Cool. So we will. Blow these up. Let's aim a little back, and there we are. Examine the lesser shadow pin. So, is it... Why is it shooting the minecart? Maybe it was trying to hit the Fulgistin. Remember there. I bet. Here we are, the rift in the mountains. Oh, and clearly there's some kind of temple there. Interesting. Okay. Well, after the shadow pin, I think... My, maybe I'll just close things out now. We're a little close to the end. I could just blow up Safa one more time. I cannot imagine this would be a quick process. So this lesser shadow pit seems to be one that's probably still in. Probably the big one is going to get all janky when we fix the rest, so... Close things out by getting a couple more whistles, by killing the local legend, that'll be the end of things today. And the simplest team to do things, anything with real, is just Newbie Fury. Okay. So we'll do that. Alright then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hello there. Hello. Just like this. And that killed some of your animals. It's a sad, but... Also an inevitability of the way of the world, and... Oh, wait. Did some fall damage, but did that interrupt what I was doing? I think it did. Oh, come on. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I do have a bit more in the way of... Well, that missed entirely. Boost mm. from... Oh, come on. So let me survive here. Pick up a few of these. Raw meat, raw meat. Give me, give me the raw meat. Okay, well, we'll stay out of the way of that, which is nice. Come on, come on. Cool, and just... Thanks. Swirl. And... Thanks. Somehow we were able to get you in place. So we could... Hit you a bit more easily. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Go for these and try not to die. Thank you, and come on. What is the meaning of this? Please don't disappear. Thank you. But man should get her in midair so she can take damage. 
Going fall damage is a good strategy if I can make it work, but it. I mean, talk about unreliable. Come on. And. Oh, because he. He doesn't have fab right now. I didn't even think about that. That's right. Okay. You would no fab, Kaza. Come on. Thanks. And. Just like that. We can. You're down. And. Without there, and hopefully make this work. I, come on. Hit. And. Oh, good lord. Why are you always moving around? Legitimate hatred. And one more. It's not for the latency issues coming from god knows where. And. Okay, we've done it. So we will claim our little prize, which is. a very nice amount of whistles. It's legitimately a decent way to grind it, and definitely more fun than the other options generally given to me. Switch back to comms team. What is interesting is that this does get very, very close to stadium. Presumably whatever this temple is, is going to be under stadium instead of Kwatepec or the Valley. So... That should be a good amount accomplished. I did spend a lot more time on those TCG challenges than I expected. They had hands. Well, of course, a card game has hands. It's the most basic pun you can make. Either way, thank you for watching. I will be seeing you. Sanaragan. See you later.